everybody, to uh, Drift in Aldalore, our weekly actual play show set in our homebrew world of Aradun. Uh, we license our music through musicbed.com and occasionally use ambiance from Sirenscape and sometimes tabletop audio. Um, and sometimes we use the music from Sirenscape, but that's in very rare situations. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm going to bring Shannon in here. Hi. Oh, jeez, that was loud. Oh, I'm sorry. I think I need to turn you down. <laughs> I was finishing a mouthful of M&Ms. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Hello, everybody. Welcome. We're happy you're here. Yay. Um, I'm going to talk about our <laughs> our partners, beginning with uh, Arcane Spectacles. <clears throat> excuse me. Who? Arcane Spectacles. Who are they? Uh, they're great. There, it's not the, the, the it's not it's not how the prompt I, starts. The prompt, no, <laughs> I couldn't think fast enough. It's okay. We're Feel only playing your, an uh, improv game. <laughs> Fuel your adventures with arcade spectacles adventure mugs available in eleven ounce and fifteen ounce sizes. Their Ooh. sturdy ceramic mugs, complete with high quality printing, are perfect for D and D. TTRPG enthusiasts, start mm -hmm. your day with a jolt of excitement Ooh. and choose your size for the ultimate gaming experience. Wowie, wowie. I know, right? Get yours now at arcadespectacles.com. <clears throat> you heard Excuse it. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Saskia's going to have a little bit of gravel in her voice today. <clears throat> All right. Underground Oracle Publishing is a best selling at their best selling any nominated TTRPG <laughs> publisher. <laughs> I just spit everywhere. <laughs> Building new and exciting settings for the cipher system of every genre you can imagine. Each setting includes everything you need to explore its unique world, including lore, species, descriptors, foci, creatures, ciphers, artifacts, and all of the rules that you need to play. For as little as $3, you can three? join their Patreon. Yeah, three, just three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Um, you can join their Patreon and help shape each of the worlds that they create. <clears throat> Good God. Uh, next, we have <laughs> Edward York. Eddie. Who's is that? Our he's our character artist. <laughs> <laughs> he's an illustrator based in the UK who makes art for games and books. To visit his portfolio and get in contact with him, visit eyork.com. Last but not least, 1985 Games. Damn it, I, I was ready for they? it that time. <laughs> I was waiting. Thank you, Clayton. <laughs> they create affordable, accessible, high-quality accessories for D&D &D and other tabletop role-playing games. Sean uses their NPC cards. Talk about them. What are they? Amazing. That's they look show, great. That's show they got great art, and they got cool details about the NPC in the back. Sean, I'm going to tell you what I just told my sixth graders today. Stop what? using words like great and cool. Be more specific. The rectangles. <laughs> That's true. He's right. Oh, they come in rectangular form. Now, they have incredibly useful and specific details on the back. Like such as? Like such as. Quirks. <laughs> <laughs> I also talked today to my students <laughs> about <laughs> subtext and text in, in dialogue when writing scripts. <laughs> Is it just the quirks? It's other things Secrets, too. Maybe that's true. Those both are true. Can you get the yeah. last two? What does every character need? Um, a soul. A cool accent. None of those things are correct. Well, they are, <laughs> but <laughs> uh, a face. He is uh, right, but that's not what's on the card. Uh, Actually, uh, well, they do have faces on the card. What does it start with? Uh, I don't know. Flaws and goals. Motive. Damn man. Oh, motive. Flaws and goals. All right. Well, you can purchase. Got them all last time. I know. It's I don't know. It's the M and M's. <laughs> it's the M and M's. It's the M and M's. Got M &M anyway, brain. you can purchase those. What'd you say? You have M and M brain. Yeah, I do. Uh, you can purchase those or any of their other amazing products. And when you do, be sure to use the code Paradise Prod for 10% off your entire order. <laughs> Misk. Huh? We have Misk. Uh, miscellaneous. Miscellaneous. Who's that? We. 
Oof. Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> we have recaps on Discord. Sean writes them for us every week and posts them in our Discord so that you can yeah. easily catch yeah. up yeah. on our uh, previous sessions. Mm -hmm. Uh, and also, just be sure to show some love for Paradise on Blue Sky, Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, Discord, Instagram, and TikTok. We're everywhere. My hair's doing a weird thing. It looks great. I'm all done. It's time for you to recap now. We'll first bring the other boys on. Then ah! You, do. then you, can you don't want us. <laughs> of course we do. Yeah. Oh, no. I brought him on do. and I regret it. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> Look at their s Look at their smiling faces. <laughs> They're pouting. <laughs> Stop They're one of pouting. Them. <laughs> Garlet has entered the chat. <laughs> <laughs> you did, I'm pretty. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Shannon is got Eminem brain and full of the giggles. Uh. But let's jump into our recap, shall we? We shall. Thank you for the permission. On the eleventh night of Anarum, the slaughter dawn, on a Sanctanir, last we left off, Iron and Mana concluded their evening at the retirement gala for Dean Dante Furio. Of the School of Art, Arts and All Manities in the, the Highland was Academy. On Friday the tenth. It was on Friday the tenth. Wait. Well, no, no one corrected me on, last wait, week. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> it was. It was on. It was on. That's mm, because it was the tenth. Nenua, a Gavella's dog. Yeah, that is the the tenth. You're correct. You're correct. Yes. You're correct. Oh, you know why? Uh, that just means Sean got it right for once. <laughs> no, I got it. Right. No, it's the eleventh, guys. It's the eleventh. No, it's Dang. the eleventh. Okay. The gala was on Friday evening. It is now the eleventh. Currently in the game. Is okay. it now? Yes. I trust Stefan's record of my calendar far more than my own at all times. <laughs> because he uh, knows um the nose knows wait a second and i got a big one me too buddy oh you're right you're correct because I fearin know. would not go well i know but i had something that can confirm it for sure so that i didn't always wonder if i accidentally skipped a day because i listened to stefan um because fearin's what we get we're gonna get to in the the recap was going to happen on the 11th. What I probably did is I actually probably started writing the 11th and then forgot to fix the rest. Anyway, last we left off, Iron and Mana concluded their evening at the retirement gala for Dean Dante Furio of the School of Arts and All Manities in the Hyven Academy. Septimus and Bruce connected with Dean Bronin of the School of Artificing and planned to meet at a later date regarding admittance to the school or at least working with the Dean. Dean Prina Mordock of the School of Agriculture and Working Animals introduced herself to Fearn and expressed interest in the culture of the northern tiefling clans, as well as the lands of Nordicos. All the while, Saskia filled the bag with as much food as she could and Jacquet ensured he said his round of goodbyes to the important people of the party. <clears throat> Our party retired for the evening, but some had a nighttime rendezvous planned. Fearn met Jacquet, disguised as LaRue, in the Widow's Ward. They made their way to the De Leon brothers to ask about Fearn's cursed mask. Andre brought them down to the lower docks by the Wailing Wharf, where he gave Fearn a time and location where he can find the traitor that sold Andre the mask. As the pair left, Alberto, Andre's brother, uh, delivered a veiled threat to the two. Fearn respond, responded in kind, but LaRue kept him from escalating it further. Back in the Cask and Crow, Bruce and Septimus are awoken by Monodrone. But he appears silent, appeared silent, with a wide red eye and a faceplate of sharp teeth. He stared silently at Septimus, 
Slowly, they noticed that all machinery no longer responded to them or their control over it. Bruce or Septimus, including Sal. Eventually, a voice echoed from the little machine, a confused and cryptic voice that answered to Lacuna. The voice demanded more, but it did not specify what it needed more of before Monodrone returned to his normal self. They questioned him, but he did not remember what had just occurred. He offered to allow Septimus to dispatch him. In other words, kill him. The little Machina did seem confused and more fearful than he typically would be, expressing more self-aware emotions than the, Mo the Modron typically, or at least your experience with the single Modron typically uh, show. The next, the next morning, the party discussed the monodrone. Septimus discerned that the voice might be looking for more modron to control, and he believes there might be another one on his farm property within a door that he's never been able to open up. The party debates whether they should dispatch, in other words, kill, monodrone. They decide to wait until Lucas completes his research in the library, and then they decide to take a few days to relax with some downtime and work on their individual tasks Three days time, they will go to the Commodore's office to follow up on the promised meeting to discuss Mr. Greaves, the hidden crime lord of Hyven. Later that evening, the dream returns to Fearn. He experienced this dream before on the boat to Stony Heath after attuning to the mask that he wears. In this dream, he sees snowy landscapes and an old temple on, in the distance in the mountains. He feels compelled to trek towards this temple, compelled by a sense of home, belonging, and a long peace. Outside the dream, Fearn stands and leaves the tavern, which is where we left off. So, Fearn. Hi. You are still dreaming. Wandering trekking across this frozen landscape. Gentle <clears throat> flakes of snow fall all around you as you only hear the crunching beneath your feet as you follow the long, dark river that flows from the mountain where the temple resides. In this dream, you're getting closer to the mountain. You're not starting in the same place you started last time. You started at the edge of the river and began following it up towards the mountain. It's bitterly cold, but you are wrapped up. Uh, as you get closer and closer, eventually you reach the base of the mountain. And there you see a set of stairs ancient and carved into the rock of the mountain, leading up hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of feet towards the temple. You find yourself continuing to be compelled to climb. Fuck stairs. <laughs> uh, do I have a weapon on me? No. Can I try and summon my weapon the way I would normally? Mm -hmm. You can. Um, <clears throat> you find yourself as soon as you, basically as soon as you try to place any of your own self onto this dream, whether it's looking for a weapon, summoning a weapon, or even just saying fuck stairs, you find yourself almost losing a little bit of your yourself. In that way in dreams, you wake up in the middle and you just, sort of going with it and believe what you believe in the dream world is happening to you where you're almost forget your sword as soon as you try to summon it and just look at your gloved hand as flakes fall into the palm. As you can see, all you have, no armor, is just the wrappings to keep you warm. Yeah, it's kind of like an afterthought, you know, mm -hmm. like I, I, I attempt to do something and then I realize that it's not important and I have to keep doing what I was already doing. Exactly. And you begin to climb. Step by step by step by step. 
feeling almost like a stranger in your own body as you ascend. Yeah, I, I, I'd assume that, like, you know, the the questions start building in my mind as I'm getting higher mm -hmm. and higher. Mm hmm. Absolutely. Um, and you keep climbing. It's going to take a very long time to get to the top of this mountain. And you're tired, but determined. One more step, one more step, one more step. And then suddenly you feel this jolt of energy and against your head, as if someone just attacked you with a bludgeoning weapon or a board or something, as you just sort of, this peaceful, serene scene is disrupted by a crack to your skull as you fall to your knees. Damn it. I look up. There's nothing there. I look around. Peaceful and falling snow. I check my head, make sure I'm not bleeding. You're bleeding. You hear uh, cries in the distance, but they don't feel like they're far away. They just feel disconnected from the dream is you can hear somebody, no one you recognize, just saying, get off of him, you big fuck. What are you doing? And then the scream of someone in pain. You're going to kill him. You're going to kill him. Crack. Another crack against your head. And everything goes black for a second. And as you didn't see stars. And then fear in your eyes open and you wake from the dream. And you're standing over a stranger you've never seen before. Your knee on his chest, his nose is broken, blood splattered across his face. Uh, as you see another man standing nearby with a board in his hands in an alleyway in Hyven. Uh, I immediately take my foot off the uh, guy that's on the ground and I step backwards and I hold my hands up ready to fight like got my fists up but like I I just look dazed and say what's happening who are you people and you see the um the guy who's on the ground scurries up onto his feet um and trips backwards falls on his ass and then the other guy steps in front of him holding the board out um, <clears throat> we didn't want any trouble. Just get, get out, get out of here. Get out of here. You almost killed him. I'm not going anywhere. Tell me what's happened. What are you, what are you talking about? Did I stutter? I'm telling you, tell me what just happened. What did I do? We were just kidding around, man. You were walking by, you looked like you were in a daze, and we fucked with you a little. You just turned and just tried to beat the shit out of him. Said, saying, fuck stairs. I, I, I put my hands down, like, a, like non-threateningly, and, and I just, like, opened my hands and say... Listen, that wasn't me. I don't know what you tried to do. But something is weird going on. I think I was un under the effect of magic. I'm sorry. I don't know if you what, what you're saying is true, but no harm, no foul. Let's just go our separate ways. This doesn't have to be a thing. You see the the guy with the bloody bloody nose who's like beat and beat into a pulp. Like you can see his eyes swelling up. Like, this is not worth the man. Let's get out of here. And the other guy tosses the board in the alleyway, and they back away slowly from you before turning and leaving. 
I check my pockets. I don't think I'd be I I have anything on me because I was like sleeping at home. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like I I check anyway, like out of instinct to make sure they didn't like rob me or whatever. Yeah, yeah. You you have anything that you would have had on you? You know, you maybe they did try to rob you, but uh, even in your sleep, you took care of it. <laughs> I I think I just let them go like i keep my eyes on them and i look around to see if anybody was watching what like the whole intricate like the whole situation yeah yeah so you find yourself uh you kind of like it takes a second to really figure it out but you find yourself um <clears throat> in uh in the widow's ward uh in an alleyway as you kind of look and see the main street up ahead there's no one watching. There's the darkened windows where people probably are watching who heard the commotion in the small tenement houses in the Widow's Ward. But it's dark. The ground is slick with with uh, with moisture from the dense fog. But it's quiet. Go on. Um, mm -hmm. Would I be able to like i've been here before would yeah. i be able to say which direction is like generally a straight line towards the uh the tavern i just came from uh yes you'd be able to to, to discern that you've been moving barely in a straight line uh so yeah my, my goal here is just to identify if i was heading the same direction that i was the last time this happened to me um, <clears throat> I would say, give me, because I believe it was north the last time it was. when I almost walked off the. Yes, you would definitely be able to tell that. Generally speaking, both times you were heading in a northern direction. Okay. Um. Like, you even find, like, your hands... I mean, obviously, your knuckles are, are bruised from beating the shit out of this man. But you also find, like, your feet are scuffed up and scratched. Your hands are as if you've been, like, just walking through. Uh, uh, just, like, whatever's on the ground or climbing on things that are probably not safe to climb when you're completely barefoot as you are. Do I have the chill that I had the last time where there was, like, coldness affecting me? Yeah, yeah. You still feel as if you are in that cold tundra. It's going to take a little while for your body to warm up. And it's also generally pretty cold out right now. It's not freezing like it is in that tundra, but you are you you do feel that sense of cold coming over you, which you know, for you is not as as harsh as it is for other people given your your nature and your your origin, but you still can tell that your your body experienced that again. I stand still and just my sh slump my shoulders and look to the north and think if I want to get down to the bottom of this, maybe I should just go. Maybe I should just keep moving. Eventually, you know, my dreams will guide me to what I'm seeking, but there's too much for me here and I have a clue for that I I worked so hard with Jaquette to get. It's best if I stay for a little while longer. And, and as I you're thinking away. these thoughts, you would feel that desire stays that you were feeling in the dream. There is a desire to go find this temple. It, it vanishes the more you regain yourself as you walk back to the Cask and Crow, to the point by the time you're back at the tavern, you no longer feel that sense of peace you were seeking, and you are, for the most part, yourself again fully. Do I remember the temple this time? You do. I want to try and 
write down. I, I think I, I come back to the tavern and I don't know how late it is at night, but if there's a way for me to order a drink and stay up uh, just for a little while, I mm -hmm. want to try and write down everything that I remember so I don't forget. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you can definitely do that. Um, it does, it is like any kind of dream where as you're writing it and trying to remember things, it is fading quickly. But you, at the very least, understand the, the general idea. Like, you know that there was a temple involved. You know you were in this snowy landscape. You know you were ascending the stairs. But the ind individual feelings start to fade from your memory. I think I just take that information. And by the way, I, I didn't actually check the uh, the note last session. When when and where is the what do, what time and date does it say <laughs> on the message that was given to me specifically? Yes. yes. <clears throat> so it uh, basically says um, the fifteenth of an arm, two a.m. Wailing Wharf. Okay. And I know where that is, the Wailing that's Wharf? Where, yeah, that's where um, uh, Andres had taken you to. Oh, okay. I, uh... I sit up in my bed for a while, just looking at the ceiling, trying to get warm under the blankets. Scoff, turn over, go to bed. Okay. You all sleep through the night. Perhaps maybe some of you a little unnerved and some of you staring at the base of your bed just making sure monodrone's not there. <laughs> um, but you all wake up the next day, um, and uh, we'll, we're going to be mostly doing a, a little housekeeping downtime, but uh, you all meet in the morning, and Fearin, if you want to take a moment to tell them what happened, you can, or you can keep it to yourself. I think I'm going to keep it to myself, Sean. Unless okay. somebody asks me about it. I will. Did you tell uh, Jacquet about the time and date of the? I Honda I would have shared that information. Yes, when I first you know looked right. at it. All right, one second. I'm just pulling up my downtime activities. Alrighty, so. <clears throat> All right, so what I have is Jacquette wants to do visit some taverns to see if he can get some other gigs. Um, <clears throat> I have uh, Roos. I have... You want to... I should have written better notes. I wrote... I have written down Inventory, Black Cube, Stone Charm for Fearn. That is not enough for me to remember what, <laughs> what Bruce wanted to do. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Uh, essentially, uh, Bruce either wants to be repairing stuff or creating yes. stuff. Um, I also wasn't sure if that was contingent on Persigos or sorry, Septimus's. Um, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> want to talk to Sigil? Oh yes, that's about right. Monodrone after that event. Um, and this is downtime, so I do understand wanting to get from point A to point B. Um, but, um, and we can, we can wait till then, um, okay. the end of the week to have that conversation. But I imagine Bruce would want to use whatever resources available to him in the Academy in the mm -hmm. artificers area, um, to do said creation or mm -hmm. fixing it of goods. Okay. Um, okay. yeah. Love it. Um, Saskia is doing a deep dive 
near the fight, where the fight with the uh, Machina was. Yep, and crime. And maybe some petty theft. And, um, <laughs> and crime. Um, Septimus, I believe you're continuing to work on your blueprints um, until you have the chance to speak with Sigil. Um, yes, blueprints slash um, using a Blessing of the Forge to mm. make parts. Yes, or right. parts. Um, and also, mm -hmm. um, and this can prioritize the day or the items for the day. Sure. Uh, and I can roll however you want me to do it. Septimus having knowledge of elementals and then moving into like Machina. Mm -hmm. Can I roll like an Arcana or a history check to know of like potions or incense to kind of create a ward mm. to keep off certain like Machina? Uh, and Septimus would try to like try to brew because he is proficient in alchemist supplies. Something that like I'm going to keep this around like while I sleep is kind of like a ward. Yeah. From. The mode drama to appear again yeah I, I think that's uh definitely something that you can do um give me an arcana check dirty 20. dirty 20. uh yes i would say with a dirty 20 you definitely um <clears throat> can Think back to your youth you and think back to some of the uh, tinctures that you may have made with your family. Um, maybe even when you were young, you might have thought like, this stuff doesn't do anything. I've never seen a Machina in my life uh, until you did. Um, so you can definitely um, acquire goods to make some uh, awards to keep Machina away. Um, and you can acquire those. Uh, goods and do an alchemist supply check to create said wards. Yes, I'd like that. Love it. Um, it. Let's see. Do, do, do. <laughs> okay, so it's going to cost you a little bit of money to get these supplies. I'll say. Uh, some of these supplies are esoteric and rare, uh, so it is going to cost you um, 25 silver to create five wards. Five uh, warding tinctures, I'll call them. Okay. That's, okay. Gotcha. So they, like, mm -hmm. they're used or expended? They get expended, Every, yes. every night? Yeah. Okay, just to make sure yeah. I know the time frame. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll say they last eight hours. Perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All righty. All righty. So, okay, and then, um, uh, Fearn, is there anything specific you want to do during these three days? Um, so I'm going to continue, uh, with my training with, uh, Saskia in the mornings, uh, if she shows up. Um, and show up. <laughs> I think that the rest of the time I'm going to be like a little standoffish to everyone, mm -hmm. you know, and I want to try and do some research on this temple mm -hmm. that I keep seeing in my dreams. Um, either whether that it entails going to the um maybe like one day I'll go to the uh academy mm -hmm. and look for a book or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then the other two days, uh, you know, like while I'm like fingering through the books that I take out, I will go to the religious area mm -hmm. of town where those temples are to mm -hmm. see if there's anybody there that might know about a northern temple similar yeah. to the one that I saw. Excellent. Um, okay, so we have some research and training with Fearn. Um, Saskia is doing her dive and some petty crime. Septimus's uh, blueprints and parts and wards. 
Um, Bruce is going to be repairing and creating things and possibly doing a little look-see at the facilities of the School of Artificing. Um, and Jacquet is uh, car uh, carousing about town, uh, trying to drum up business for Jackie Touche. And I put a down payment on that plate armor that we still haven't calculated the price <laughs> of my silver. Oh, uh, I believe we said you get 500 silver for, for it because it was 10 pounds, right? Right. Yep. So yeah. So, so you, you can silver? during this downtime you can go collect the 500 silver from them. So I think it was like five. Uh, I'm I'm short like a hundred and nineteen gold. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm gonna. Uh, can you I like ask put... me for it while we're training? I'll give it to you. I I think that's probably <laughs> what would happen. Uh, but like it would be the sort of thing that I'd show up there with short amount of money, and I'd be like, "You've got to fit it. I'll give you the rest once all the work's done." <laughs> sort of thing, you know. Yeah, and an Autobahn is just sort of like, ah, yeah, 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 okay, all right, all right. Ring him up. <clears throat> okay. Wow, that hurt my throat to do that voice. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. I would like everyone to roll quick initiative, or just a d20. No, don't add your initiative, because I just want to <laughs> go through this. I think whoever's fastest gets to do their downtime first. <laughs> All right. Um, all right, Bruce, what'd you get? Eight. Eight. Jacquet. Fourteen. Fourteen. Sass. Nine. Septimus. Just a D20? Yep. Uh, <laughs> four. <laughs> oh, man, I was hoping that you would roll high just because it's very <laughs> insignificant to roll high here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, well, I guess that's true. I guess I don't feel as bad. Uh, and Fearon, what'd you get? Sean, you're killing me. You said initiative first. I would have a 15 if it was an initiative roll. <laughs> if it was just a regular 20, I got a 13, which means he goes first. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So, Jacquet. Ah. Uh. You're up first. Jacquet, Sas, or uh, Jacquet, Fearn, Saskia, Bruce, then Septimus. So I know that some of this, like you might come in and out, uh, where like you know Sass, you're doing stuff with Fearn and so on. Um, Bruce, you and Septimus might be, be spending some time together. So it's okay to come into someone's turn, but your main thing, I'm gonna save for your turn. Um, all right. So Jacquet, tell me a little bit about how you want to be looking about town for these taverns. So Jacquet starts going around. I mean, I think he's already found out about a few taverns yep. uh, just by walking around. But he's going to stop and ask, like, hey, uh, you know a good tavern in town? I'm looking to, uh, for a place to play. Like, <clears throat> just not even hiding it, just being like, oh, anyone ask? I, uh, Jackie Touche, uh, maybe you've seen me at the Harlequin and Chalice. I'm just looking for some new spots. Okay, go ahead and give me a persuasion roll. 24. Farts. Uh, <laughs> um, that sounded sassier than I meant it to. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, so you are able to ask around um, and you get three recommendations for taverns. Generally speaking, if you spend the full three days on this, or for the most part, most of the three days, or a significant amount of time each day, you could like do a full tour and like at least like put eyes sure. on each tavern um, so that you kind of have a, a map of everywhere that you might be able to perform in Hyven. Now, as you're going through these taverns, you do realize a few of them are just not set up for for right. uh, music, um, particularly the ones oops. performance. Not we're not Jacques not a yes. musical bard. He's a performing yes. bard. He does and like up comedy. <laughs> and like, <laughs> And if you, uh, uh, like, even if you, like, ask them, they'd be like, we could probably, like, set you up. But, like, there's no, like, you, they're clearly, like, this is where people sleep and not really right. where people go to eat and, and enjoy entertainment. So the ones that stand out as being non-starters are obviously the Red Dandelion because it's abandoned when you walk by it. Um, then there's the, um, 
the cheap tankard hostel, which uh, no one knows, but that's where Saskia sleeps. Um, <laughs> it is named after the fact that if you pay an extra copper, you can get you can rent out a mug and, and put water in it while you stay. And that's it. <laughs> um, and then there is uh, one other place that doesn't really have a set up. Um, actually, no, it's just those two. Oh. So just that one. Everything, everywhere else can 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 hold up a performance. Um, and you can see as you're going through that they, there's definitely the full range. You can see that there are uh, really, really cheap places, and then you actually right. can like walk around and, and pinpoint some of the really expensive places. Um, the you are able to get three recommendations from people for places that are particularly well known for entertainment. Okay. Um, you already know the Harlequin and Chalice, um, but you sure. do, I would say, find that a lot of people say like, that's the place like that. That's like the music scene is in the Harlequin and Chalice. But there are other places where folks will go for music. Um, <clears throat> one of those is in the Admiralty Court, um, which is called the Royal Goat uh, Tavern. Nice. Um, one of them is... A little more of a scandalous location and people tell you this you get a few people who kind of give you a, a, a elbow nudge and go <laughs> entertainment um that is the good whisper bordello the good whisper bordello uh it doesn't take long for you to discern that this place is also a brothel it is in harborside uh, harborside okay thank you <clears throat> Uh, and then the last place um, that folks begin to recommend is the um, do, 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 uh, a place called Humble Haven in the old Brigadier Gate District, so over by the flea market. Um, they do warn you that the Humble Haven is not had a lot of people go to it lately because there was a really, really big brawl that happened there that has turned some people off to the place. But it is usually a, a very um, higher end space. So of those um, three, basically they're all high end taverns. They all are expensive. The okay. um, the Good Whisper Bordello is actually considered extremely luxurious. Um, like even beyond just expensive, it is it is a luxury uh, place. Um, so probably, uh, maybe the Royal Goat would probably also, I would say be more luxurious as it is in Admiralty Court, right. but it is a little bit more of like, that's the, that's the diver, the dive location within the nice place. <clears throat> okay. Um, but you would be able to make yourself a little map of all of the taverns. Sure. Yeah. And you'll notice there are four taverns within the Merchants Exchange. Two of them you already know about, Cask and Crow and the Harlequin and Chalice. Um, Where's the, the Merchants Exchange? So the Merchants Exchange is basically uh, the center of Hyven. It's where it's, it's okay. Main Street, High Road, um, that whole area gotcha. where most of the commerce happens um there's two other taverns within the merchants exchange the goat and glaive and the edder cap and spider they all have and names okay uh piscator's row has two operating taverns there's the buck there's buckets gin house and the platinum pot they're both real cheap dive bars um of course there's the otter business as you know there is also a um, another tavern within the Widow's Court, court Widow's Ward, called the Brave Belt Hostel, that uh, does have a tavern within it, as opposed to the other hostel. Um, Admiralty Court has two others, the Turquoise Flute and the Salty Knight Lodge. Knight is in a shining armor knight. And that one is not a brothel, even though it kind of Turquoise sounds like one. Loot. Flute. And... Flute. Flute. Goot. Flute. Sorry, I'm just fucking with you. I know. And what was the other one? Turquoise the salty and... the salty night lodge. Okay. Uh there is another uh tavern that is out of business, similar to the Red Dandelion, called the Serpent Coil Public House. 
in the lighthouse. In, in, in the, the lighthouse, lighthouse district. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Harborside has the cheap tankard hostel and the bordello, like I said. Old Brigadier Gate District has the Humble Haven. Uh, it has the Square Horse Bar, which is a little hole in the wall. The nice bartender named Hal. Um, <laughs> there's the Golden Quill Tavern and Library, which has much more of a cafe vibe because there's a bunch of books in there and people go there to drink and read. Uh, very impressive if that is what you're into. Uh, and then the, finally, the Gatehouse Cat, which is actually at the front entrance of Hyven. So there you have it, folks. The 19 taverns. I promised within Hyphen. <laughs> All with Could their own again? unique personalities. So in the merchants, you <laughs> know, and fun, the funny enough, Stefan, I, you, you challenged me earlier, but I did actually start writing their owner, proprietor, specialties, aesthetics. So mm -hmm. look, go to any the only reason I challenge you with these things, because I know you'll actually do them and you'll do them well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to help you build that compendium. Mm -hmm. We all know oh, you're yeah. going to publish. <laughs> um, um, but uh, but yeah, and and they range, like I said, from dirt cheap all the way to luxurious. All right, so I think Jacquette's tactic here is to target one in each district okay. um, that would cater most to... Uh, or, you know, that would be the best uh, for his performances. So, I mean, obviously he's got his gig at the Harlequin and Chalice, which, mm -hmm. I mean, unless Oren says is changing, I'll assume is every other Thursday. Or mm -hmm. yell this fog, whatever. Um, so I've got another one. That's in the week. Friday. Me, not <laughs> Uh So he's, you know, he would check in at the Royal Goat Tavern. Mm -hmm. uh, he would check in on the Good Whisper Bordello. Um, and then the humble Haven, mm -hmm. um, I think he would see that as an interesting opportunity to help the current owner. Mm -hmm. Um, obviously the lighthouse district there's, is a no go. Um, and then, so, so, so Piscator's row in widow's ward, are those considered two different districts or are they, they are, but not like they are in the sense of like, that's just how people refer to them now. Okay. Though Widow's Ward was originally part of Piscator's Row. Gotcha. Um, and, and over the last year, it has devolved away from being part of it. So I think um, he would... Actually, and does anyone mention the Otter Business as a place to perform? Some people would mention that there is good fight nights there. Uh, and that the mm -hmm. the fact that they do entertainment in the sense of fight night, they they basically like they could use some music. Uh, <laughs> it's been a while yeah. since they've ever. Uh, uh, I mean, the fight night hasn't happened in like a month, but uh, the uh, they didn't even get a bard in there. Like it's boring. I don't even want to go there anymore. So I guess you know between the four in that area, between the buckets, gin house, uh, platinum mm -hmm. pot the Brave Belt Tavern and Otter Business. Is there one that like might be a better fit? Uh, just like, you know, in passing potentially. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, the Buckets Gin House, when you pass by, seems like a wild place. Like it's loud just from the people inside screaming about and like the people standing out front look like they are blackout drunk like this is a gotcha. a raging rowdy place um the platinum pot is probably the one that looks the cheapest despite its name um and is really mostly old sailors chewing tobacco drinking warm beer uh <laughs> The uh, Otter Business, of course, you already know somewhat. Um, and the Brave Bell Hostel is very small, but um, uh, it's a little, it's probably the quirkiest of them all. It has like the, the most character when just looking at its structure and the okay. interior. Um, it's also the largest of the four. 
All right, then I think he would go with uh, the Brave Bell Tavern. Mm -hmm. So he's got these four uh, taverns that he's going to try to uh, speak with the proprietors or whoever's there mm -hmm. about getting together a um, performance. Okay. Okay. Um, <clears throat> you could definitely do that over the next three days um, and uh, see if you can wrangle yourself a gig. I'll say as part of that, um, uh, let's give me, give me another persuasion roll. Twenty-seven. Why? <laughs> okay, so I'll say that you're able to acquire uh, three out of the four. Then, um, oh. where the the one that's probably the most kind of like maybe later, like come back later, is the um, is you'd think it would be the royal goat because it's in the fancy district, but it's actually the bordello. They yeah. they have the most like the owners strictest about like whether or not they're going to approve a bard. There's like a longer application process for them essentially, where they're like, you come back in a month, basically. Gotcha. The um the brave bell, they're like, absolutely. Get on in here. You know, we've needed some kind of music in here so that people stop punching each other. Um, that, that, even though this, it's not as rowdy as the buckets, buckets gin house, it does mm -hmm. all the places within Piscator's row and the widow's ward does seem to be a little, little rowdy other than the platinum pot with its old bogeys. Um, and, uh, humble Haven is, is just eager to have something to draw sure. people back in. And then during this time, I think Jacquette, you know, as he starts talking with some of these owners and stuff is just like. So, yeah, you know, I've been uh, going around town and I was wondering, uh, I met up with the Commodore the other day. I was just, you know, what's the deal with her? Like, how did she get into that position? And so he's going to try to gleam some information out of not even just necessarily the proprietors, but anyone, you know, that's willing to, you know, give them some information, mm -hmm. you know, things like uh, who she is and where she came from, how she got the position of Commodore, where her interests lie, and is in like, you know, as a, a ruler, um, her favorite types of cigarettes, etc. You know, that list that I'm sending you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, I'm not going to have you do another roll because I'll just kind of roll this into the carousing you already, you've already done um, <clears throat> and succeeded at. Uh, so basically, you find out that she was the story at least that people tell is that she was originally as a young woman uh trying to train and become a hedge paladin actually an oath of the hedge uh she was originally someone who cared all the stories say this is a woman who cared deeply for people who has been sort of some say crushed others say sold out others say you know ground up by bureaucracy to become the cold woman that everyone sees her as now um generally a, a story of a hopeful youth who kind of became jaded with the world but the universal thing everyone says is that despite maybe what you've experienced with her everyone says that she in her heart of hearts seems to hold some spirituality um, that people think is is been torn out from her and, and ripped to pieces, uh, given her current iciness. And then some people are like Commodore. What the, what the Commodore? What, is, what do you want to know about the Commodore? The Commodore's never here. <clears throat> she stays up in the fancy, fancy edge of city, you know, with a bunch of weirdos, and you know, she might as well be from the capital. Who gives a shit? All these new laws coming in, new laws, whatever. You know, she's going to leave in a month. And you know who's going to be back? All the criminals. All the criminals. All the goddamn pirates. And uh, the freaking uh, defiance. They're just going to, everything's going to go back to normal. And you know what? Good. I like it that way. 
I assume this is at uh, the the Brave Bell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next thing you know, I'm gonna have to pay my taxes. You don't pay your taxes? Of course not. That's Why would none you? of your business, kid. <laughs> You're a smart, entrepreneuring business owner. You know how to get around the tax code, don't you? <laughs> That's why I call it a hostel. I don't have to pay a, pay for a liquor license. But you still serve the alcohol? Uh, there's no liquor license in Hyphen. <laughs> I thought that there's this whole thing at the cask and cr Never mind. <laughs> <clears throat> but yeah. Um, I guess you, you would... Uh, um, you would learn what her favorite brand of cigarette is. I don't have it for you right now because I'd like to make that's put, fair. Actually, <laughs> some thought into it. Put some thought into it, but you you would um, see that she dragon's does. tongue. <laughs> that's actually that's pretty my good. My go-to. That's any, actually a really good. In one. Any fantasy dragon's tongue cigarettes. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, she likes the mass-produced shit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> of course she does. But uh, okay. Um, Marlboro Boros. All right, I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> it's not that bad, actually. Uh, anyway, all right. Um, we're gonna move over to Fearn now. Um, so I imagine Fearn, you and Saskia each day training on the beach. We have some beach training montages. Uh, <laughs> you two running on the beach, doing push-ups in the sand. Montage. Too. <laughs> doing... How many more? This is <laughs> fucking sucks. She's just doing pull-ups on my arm. <laughs> it <out>. <laughs> <laughs> Saskia, what is your strength score? Uh, it's not good. It is a ten. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sass is incredibly average when it comes to strength, so she, so she can do one pull-up. One. <laughs> yep. well, and, she I, to, I think... and she has to. Kick her legs to get up. <laughs> Fionn would definitely be working to her strengths, though. Yeah. Like, yeah. he would encourage her to, like, while sparring, use her magic in, like, non-lethal methods to, you know, uh, keep up with him. Like, he, he doesn't want her to learn his way. He wants her to figure out her own way. So he'll constantly like, be putting her or giving her challenges and just not giving any advice like oh yeah uh, like swim across uh yesterday you you swim two laps uh, uh like around hyven today you're gonna do it but you gotta do a blindfolded folded or something like that <laughs> or you know uh, we were sparring the other day uh you almost were able to tap my back today we're going to spar again but this time uh you have you're gonna have one hand tied behind your back and you gotta hit the top of my head or something like that love it love it <laughs> yeah like I try like... trying to keep things spicy to yeah. like entertain himself and not <laughs> maybe not yeah. at, like at a detriment of her actually learning things yeah but yeah <laughs> i like that and and sass i mean imagine you'd probably would start using your magic at a certain yeah. point, just be to, yeah. to augment. I imagine, like, when he says, you have to tap my head with the one arm, you just, like, misty mage step. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay, I guess you could just mage, mage hand hands. it. I was thinking you, like, literally yeah. misty steps, and you're standing That's on his it. shoulders and just That's tap him on the say, head. I, I do both, I do both. <laughs> and then he misty steps on your head, and you have to misty step, misty oh, yeah. step, misty step. And then I'm out of spell slots. <laughs> Wait, how many spell slots do you have? We both have, like, two. <laughs> but I have a pearl of power, so I always win. Oh, okay, yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> um excellent love it um okay and then fear and you were also were going to do some train uh um, some research so research does take a little while in downtime like to do full research um what you can do right. is you can start your research and then finish it uh, after you guys do the commodore uh, uh meeting right um or you can pay someone to do the research for you I this is something that Fearn kind of want to keep to himself at mm. least for now, okay. so he's gonna try and do it himself. Um, just to get started, I think this was kind of an initial research run anyway. Like he wasn't expecting to figure out the answer in two days, mm -hmm. but like he wants to dip his feet in the water, and then maybe the Commodore or this other clue will open things up for him. Okay, um, definitely. 
Uh, so, uh, <laughs> I would like a roll from you. Okay. Um, do you want to specify? Uh, in one second, I'm looking at the research downtime and I don't see a specific, uh, there isn't actually a, a specific role for it. It's just a research role. Um, but you're using the Academy which has a very well-stocked library, so you do have advantage on it. So, uh, straight D20 roll, but you have advantage. And you technically can pay to increase, to add a modifier. You can... Um, I'm broke, Sean. I know I you're broke. I have four copper to my name. I <laughs> yeah. don't know where I'm going to You can ask tonight. me for more if you want. I have a lot, and I don't care who I give it to. I did not want to ask you for what I gave you, so uh, what you already gave me. So it's, it's I literally not don't care. <laughs> you might feel awkward, but Saskia, like, Saskia doesn't at yes, all. I imagine Saskia keeps saying that when Fearn says, "I'll pay if you, you back. More, I'll pay you just back." Let me know. Yeah, if you need more, it's just don't, Fear, don't Fear, worry about it. Fearn's it's like, fine. I feel like it took like four times of Saskia telling him, "Let me pay for it," before he actually gave in and like <laughs> took the money. Um, but. I rolled with advantage and got a 10. Oh, wait, 10. no, I got a 9 because it added the two together. I got a 9 and a 1. A 9? Okay. Um, <laughs> so that we won't actually get the conclusion of that until the week week's end, but you do you will get something with that 10. You're not going to walk okay. away with nothing. It was a 9. Um, <laughs> and then can you roll me a d10? And, and give me high or low. Always roll high, Sean. Two. Okay. Then no no complications happen during your research. Oh, okay. Because one of my favorite parts a of complication the complication is a good thing. <laughs> um. No, no, no. I, I, I want it to be interesting. Yeah, I was <laughs> uh, truthfully, I was asking you for the 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 fail. Uh, um, points. So if you rolled a 10, you would have failed and had to roll a d6 for complications. And there's some fun ones in there, like you accidentally damage a very rare book or, you know, something. I else. want Fearn to get a rival at the academy. <laughs> <laughs> some students like, I need that book. And Fearn's like, no, I'm using it. <laughs> and every time you come to the academy, he's like, oh, you. <laughs> Yo, I got the book first. Fearn just picks him up by the head, crushes no. it, throws him aside. That's not fair. <laughs> this is an arena of the mind. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, Fearn. So you could be uh, outside of training with Sasuke, you're beginning this research over these three days. Alrighty. Saskia. Yes. You're diving. I'm diving. I'm diving, okay. Sean. Let's dive. Right. What are you looking for? Just stuff? Um, just stuff. <laughs> yeah, I mean I'm gonna I'm gonna mainly focus on even though the governor said not to, I'm gonna I'm gonna go look down around where we had the fight. Um mm -hmm. I'm not necessarily looking for the creature that we fought, but uh, if that was the location of the fight, maybe there's some other interesting crap down there. Yeah. Um, and I also would like to ask uh, the voice in my head a question on one of these days, but it, it, does, it doesn't matter when. Okay. All right, let's do the dive first. Um, so uh, go ahead and give me an investigation check. You got it, plus. You have blind sight, so you won't have trouble seeing down there other than the general muckiness of the water. 17. 17, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. All righty. So when you go down there, it's interesting because there's very little, actually, um, other than like just some other, you know, stuff that you see and you're like, that's junk. That's not scrap. Mm -hmm. That's junk. Um, <clears throat> you know, stuff that's fallen off ships. Um, you know, that's, you know, you, you do think to yourself for a moment, like, you know, I could probably dig through the, the silt here and find some interesting stuff that's fallen off of a ship. And maybe you put mm -hmm. a bookmark in your head for a later date for that. Yeah. Um, you don't find any remains of the large machina. They fully excavated it from the water or took it out of the water. You do see some 
uh, of the little guys, though, the little spider machina are okay. littered all around. Um, so there is some some stuff there that you think might be interesting to uh, Bruce I and Septimus particularly. I was, yeah, I was going to say, uh, maybe I, I salvage one or two of those little spider things um, mm -hmm. and maybe later in the day I would go and I'd hand it off to Bruce because I know he's working in the academy just to be like, here, I found this for you. Have fun. Yeah, I'll say if, yeah, you can, because the thing is, if you're using your three days for this, like mm -hmm. you could go one day, grab one, go another day and grab another one. So people do look at you funny, but you're not the first person to to do some diving. There is at one point where like a, a wharf master does kind of come over and be like, I got what? Don't fucking do that. You're going to get hurt. I've been doing this for a long fucking time. I know what I'm doing, but I th appreciate your concern. Ah, you never know much. when you're coming up from the water. There could be a boat there. You crack your skull and then I got to fish I your damn see... body out of the water. Don't worry, sir. You're not going to need to be able to do that. I can see beautifully in the water. And I can breathe in it, too, so we're good. I say. This ain't shallow's gaunt, missy. <laughs> no, 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 it's not. <laughs> Thank you for your concern. Bloop. <laughs> uh, not, where'd you go? Where'd you go? <laughs> and then when you come up that day, he's still waiting there, and he's tapping his foot, and he goes, What's your name, missy? Why? Tell me your name. Saskia. Saskia. And what's yours? Pleasure to meet you. Wallace. Wallace. What's Thanks your last name? for looking out for me, Wallace. What's your surname? Oh my god, it's fucking sea blood. Sea blood? Yeah, because I've got the blood of the sea. What kind of a name is sea blood? I just fucking told you. But it's a great one. It's fucking selkies. All right, well, <laughs> I'm putting your name down on a list. <laughs> he oh, storms off. Great, great. That's fine. Write storms my name off. pretty when you do it. <laughs> and most likely goes um, <clears throat> and uh, puts your name on a list with the Wharf Master. Hi, the, the one that you already know. Ha ha. Harbor Master? Harbor Master, thank you. You're welcome. Um, who goes, ah, this dude. Crosses it off. <laughs> um, you said there's something you would like to ass yes yeah so as i'm like uh bruce you're on deck yeah uh as i am uh go like diving down i'll kind of mm -hmm. like look out into the abyss mm -hmm. and just say like you know i have a question for you uh can you just give me some sign that you're listening because it's kind of a big one uh give me a persuasion roll mm-hmm 22. 22. Okay. Why don't you answer me, Ocean? <laughs> um, as you say that, um, you... I'm sorry. What was the question again? <laughs> I, <laughs> I haven't my brain asked just it. I, but you I, said, well, uh, I said, show me a sign. Me some, show me a sign that you're listening before okay, I ask okay. it. That's what I thought. I just, my brain froze for a second there. Um, you uh, would be kind of like you say that, and you look around, and there's just sort of, you know, there's that sound of being underwater, where it's just sort of... Um, and That's then, <laughs> um, suddenly, though, you would see... You'd feel a little tug on your leg. Um, and you look down, you can see a crab has kind of billowed itself up and grabbed mm -hmm. onto your leg. Mm -hmm. and is climbing up. Um, and it comes up to your shoulder. And you kind of look mm -hmm. at it, and it's little crab eyes. <laughs> um, and it does, it does, brings its claws up like this and just. Excellent. Hi. Um, so, and I, I look around to make sure nobody's listening, even though I'm fucking underwater. Yeah, you see um, a couple of fish looking at you funny. Yeah, fuck off. Um, <laughs> listen, uh, I'm curious. And I, I was going to say the polite thing and say you don't have to answer if you don't want to, but I really want you to fucking answer. Can you tell me what my name was before I gave it to you? I don't I don't want it back. Right? No. I don't want it back. I just I just want to know. I just want to know what it was. No, just... Please. The crab looks at you. <laughs> as much as your crab face can look at you. 
Yeah. You just see the little the eye stalks just. Um, is this you? Is this fucking you? Is the pluck? Or is this you? Uh, it's <laughs> so you're holding this little crab. It's it starts to shake its legs and it snips you on the finger. Ow! Ow! Uh, and and you see it just sort of down to the bottom as you would hear a giggle on the water, just sort of. Uh, uh, you heard her use her menacing voice with you mm. when she's mad at you. This is playful. There's just sort of this strange little laughter on the water as you would feel the waves kind of like for a moment, like kind of wash over you. And yeah. that's more of a, a solid sign that she's listening now. The fuck was the crab about then? Did you hear me? Do I have to repeat it? What was my name? I want to know. I want to know. I'm curious. That's the only reason. I say absolutely lying. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a deception check. Mm. Sixteen. <laughs> Roll again. Fourteen. Roll again. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, you better be. You do this all now. fucking day. 17? Yeah. She rolled that one on her inside check there. So as you say all of this, there's a you, you're still kind of floating in the in the water in that way, treading water as the waves just sort of Um and then you would hear just sort of a very faint whisper, almost as if the whisper is coming in on the wave and then disappearing back into the ocean. Um, mm, cool. She would just say, that's not how this works. But it's, to, I, I don't want to do anything with it. I just, I just want to know what it was. You know, just a, a little, no, no, a little no. piece, a little piece. No, piece. no, no. Can you tell me what it started with? How about that? Or, or the first syllable. How about the first syllable? Please. You have no name. No, that's not fucking true. I know that's not true. You have that's no name. That's not true. No, I have a fucking name. Yeah, it's Saskia, but that's the one that I fucking made up when I woke up. I know I had another one. What the fuck is it? Let go of that life. No, no. As the wave no. retreats back into the water. And you're floating alone now, off. and you feel alone. Because yep. you see that crab scuttle across the floor. Yeah, the fuck ocean. you. It turns around, <laughs> snaps its claws, and then turns away and walks away. Scuttles, sorry, scuttles, doesn't walk. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, Mike. <laughs> I missed it, what'd you do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this, this, little, this little crab's name is uh, Michael Krabs. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. There's a ton of Michaels in this world. Yes. All played by Mike. Love it. <laughs> um <laughs> okay. of course. <laughs> well, then I'll continue my dive, go get another little spidery thing. Uh and then on my way to go deliver it to Bruce, I will steal some shit. You're stealing? I'm stealing. I'm pissed God. off. I can't believe it. What do you got? Crab juice in your ears? <laughs> Magic crab, crab juice. juice. Crab juice. Crab juice. <laughs> uh, go ahead and give me a sled hand check. Yeah. Eleven. Eleven? Okay. Eleven. You're able to steal five silver worth of, of knickknacks. Great. And the shopkeep does not notice you. Nice. As you, I imagine, just kind of move through like an out outlet, an outdoor outlet in the market, yep. in the merchant's exchange, as you just sort of lift up a uh, little hat uh, mm -hmm. that was at a table. And you now have a, fi a, a, a actually pretty nice hat worth five silver. Cool. It's got nice embroidery all over it. It kind of looks like a bucket hat. Um, <laughs> but with like a uh, little uh, colorful designs uh, woven into it. Cool. 
Make sure to put that in your inventory. I'm doing it right now, Sean. Right now. It's Don't add five it. silver to your... No, you no. have a bucket hat of... of an embroidered of, bucket an hat. An embroidered bucket hat. <laughs> um, all right. <clears throat> so, um, Bruce. My boy. Bruce. Bruce, hey. my boy. <laughs> hey. Yeah, what's up? <laughs> um, when you decide to go scope out the School of Artificing... Um, you don't uh, actually find Bronin um, there right away. You do find a representative for Broden's office, though, who, uh, when you come to the front gatehouse and say, oh, I'm here under the uh, invitation of Dean Bronin, um, the person at the front's like, hmm, name, Bruce Rebellin. Yeah, got it. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Uh, your escort will be here in a moment. Um, oh. it, is, it is not the guy from before. <laughs> <laughs> it's a different person. It, you actually probably maybe re um, recognize them or their shape uh, as one of the grad students who was at the, the dinner party. Um, and like, right this way, Bruce. Dean Bronin has approved me to show you around our facilities. So you can see oh, what, please, what sort of stuff. Um, <laughs> and uh, this grad assistant goes around showing you, uh, like first they just kind of, you can tell they start what is a general campus tour um that uh then they're like oh silly me no we're going somewhere specific uh as they lead you to the school of artificing um which you can tell when you get there and then the person tells you the history of it um this a, a big chunk of the artificing school is actually a pretty old structure um the uh, stone uh, of it is worn and old. It actually kind of looks like it at one point might have been part of like a fort that was on this this um, hilltop uh, and had been repurposed into a building. Um, and they tell you the history of it, that this was one of the oldest structures in Hyven. It was here when Hyven was founded. Uh, they tell you a little bit about how Hyven was founded on the ruins of a city uh, that was from the, the, uh, the before times. Um, and, uh, and also that this building used to be, used to belong to the Arts and Humanities College, but, uh, they've been downsized for the new college to come in. Um, and then they finally get you to the state-of-the-art facility, um, <laughs> where you can see there's this partially indoors, partially outdoors, um, workshop. You had actually already seen the outdoor portion of the workshop when you had passed by when Dean Bronin was teaching a lesson here uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, but you can see it's attached to a uh, indoor warehouse that's quite large, new, brand new, constructed, red bricks, uh, tall ceilings uh, with different areas within for different uh, types of artificing. You can see there's a whole alchemist lab in there um, that is kind of cordoned off to be a little bit more sealed. Um, you have a whole section that is for just processing of materials um, for the artificers to use. Um, you can see there's an area that the student is very excited and he points to it. And you can see there's a bunch of like um, sandbags around it. Uh, and he goes, that's our experimental zone. That's where we really do the, the cool stuff. Um, and no accidents so far this year. No one, no one's, the worst that's happened is, uh, Doyle, cut, uh, burned his eyebrows off with that experimental, uh, potion of sorts that was supposed to, uh, turn his hair into fire, but it just burned his eyebrows off and he got really bad acid reflux and, uh, it was not a great week for him. And is that like high level experimental or what are we talking? Well, I mean, we haven't really, I mean, it's a new school. We've really only been up and running fully for the last, uh, since the, uh, since the great storm, really, we set up right before it. And thankfully it's a new structure built well by people who know how to design things. So the storm didn't really hurt us too much. Um, so we just not really a lot of like, and he kind of looks around oversight for these, the experiments. So let's just say we haven't reached the ceiling yet. Oh, all right. And is there any like, you know, regulation on some stuff or is it kind of just everybody's got their own well, autonomy? Well, we do have to follow some of the codes of conduct of the university uh, and the academy. Um, but uh, Dean Bronin kind of has his own set of rules that he uses to enforce here, mostly having to do with cleaning up properly and safety protocols hence the sandbags good i love it 
Did you? Um, and then he brings you out to the outdoor area where you can see they have uh, basically like a yard for uh, processing of goods too that might be too hot to do inside, um, as well as more like practical test zones where it's like you have stuff you might see in a barracks, like you see like dummies um, and different things. You can see some like stacked up brick walls um, that uh, they probably experiment on and then mend them back up um the is the grad assistant says yeah you know if we have something that needs to experiment it's uh collision um capacities against walls or anything like that or we have to retest the reinforcement of walls the effects of certain things on those walls we do it all out here in the safety of this work this uh this yard um and it gets real interesting uh we got some targets over there for projectile uh inventions uh you know, we have a ton of different toys that we like to make here, but uh, ultimately, you know, Dean Bronin likes to focus on his projects and likes to focus our attention on his projects, which often have to do with helping those with disabilities or those uh, less fortunate uh, to make their lives a little bit easier. You know, we don't have the capacity for mass production here like you might find in Halcyon uh, or even Solanel, the capital. But uh, I like to think that the little packages we're able to make help a lot of people. Great. Uh, mm. We also do a lot of agricultural tinkering uh, for the purposes of the farmlands, as well as innovations for seafaring. Um, and this is really exciting especially since you, you're considering becoming a new student. But Bronin has started to invite guests from the capital to talk about uh, aeronautics. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. All right. There's even rumors that he might even have a contact through one of the other professors from Halcyon to get someone in here uh, to talk about the airships. That's That's huge. It's only rumors. It's only rumors. But, you know, <laughs> needless to say, I'm quite, we're quite excited here. Someone from House uh, Lapis, even, directly. Uh, oh. Which you would know is the family primarily who owns basically all the skyships. All right. Wonder if I, uh, I know the person over there. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I Ronan did say uh, you weren't from around here, but, uh, but yeah. So, I mean, this is our facility. Um, you know, this is mainly what what it was what it was assigned to show you. Uh, and uh, you know, feel free to come by. I mean, you know, we 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 won't be able to use everything, but if you want to try it a few times before committing to the school or to whatever you're arranging with Bronin. Yeah. But, uh... As far as I could tell, pretty sold. Um, what uh, what what do I not have access to? So I'd say, as long as uh, one of the lab assistants is here, myself or one of the others, uh, you could use the experimental zone to test your own projects if you've got got any in in, in your belt. Um, uh, I'd say you, uh, they won't allow you to use our resources, but you can use the processing area to process your own resources. Uh, and then the outdoor area is completely open to you. Oh, great. That's, that's all I needed for now. Uh, as far as uh, next steps for, for, for me getting in full enrollment, mm -hmm. uh, do you, have you spoken to Bronin about this? Well, as, as a current student myself, I can tell you about the whole admissions process. <laughs> Oh, wonderful. If you could yeah, please, yeah. Well, please and, go and, over And us. he goes over that. <laughs> <laughs> and you, Alex, have to write me an admission essay. No! <laughs> Alex, do what your Alex. week is that? <laughs> I'll make you a whole new subclass, Sean. Just <laughs> no, Alex, just I'm sorry, but you're going to have to complete essay. the common application. Uh, send it to me. <laughs> and I'll have the uh, Hyven admissions uh, office take a look at it. <laughs> no. <laughs> I would like to be part of that committee that reviews his application. <laughs> It'll be exactly when um, 
uh, Jacquette starts teaching at Hyven, the Hyven Academy, and they're like, oh, you're new here? Uh, you're bottom of the totem pole? We're going to give you some administrative work to have to do as you're a part of your contract. Uh, you're going to be on the hiring committee for, or the admissions committee. Oh, great. I get to decide the future of all these unnamed... Wait a minute, I know this guy. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Fail. Um, but basically, the real process for it is is they they want to see an invention uh something that you've you've created um and uh and then of course you know just uh one reference we'll need one reference okay i, I got those nailed yeah yeah oh and then and then a tuition deposit oh <laughs> that i might need to we'll cross Ask that it. bridge when we get there <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, uh, so Bruce, are there other things you want to do over these three days? <laughs> uh, so, sorry, we'll say that takes up one of your afternoons. And you All can, right, thank yeah. you. Uh, <laughs> I imagine the rest of the time would either be uh, helping Septimus come mm -hmm. up or you know, uh, letting Septimus know everything that's available to Bruce for now mm -hmm. and then eventually him. Um, uh, as well as be available for anything related to creation of his arm. Mm -hmm. um, Bruce would probably also be experimenting with even more traps and and whatnot. Um, yeah. Uh, trying not to blow up, you know, the, the room that he's in. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, yeah. now that he's at has access to the experimental room, he's probably going to utilize that more. And yeah, have uh, yeah. bigger explosions and be like, all right, well, let's try this out. Let's shrapnel. <laughs> Enter in the montage of that lab assistant, yes. grad assistant, sit, sit, crouched behind the sandbags with Bruce wearing his own set of goggles as Bruce just this tra <laughs> <laughs> shrapnel goes flying everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you see the the lab assistant's like, oh no, oh god, I thought there was a wall of force here. Oh uh, no, worked as oh expected. there's shrapnel <laughs> in the processing area. Uh, yeah, but you know All what? Right, That's we'll... what testing's for. <laughs> we got to build a better experimental room. That's all I hear. <laughs> um, um yeah. and then and on top of that, uh, yeah, any any sort of like a research as well um for weapon upgrades and mm -hmm. uh like modules for maybe maybe a gun yeah um, yeah absolutely and uh, uh and yeah, I'll, that's kind of it. I'll say for that research portion we'll do the same thing that i did with fearn where you're beginning it and then we'll conclude it after the commodore uh meeting yeah. so if you want to give me that d20 roll um I you can shall. add a plus one to it uh, you can add as many plus ones as you want, but it costs fifty silver each one. Um, I'm sorry, it's not all as many as you want. It's up to six. Um, twenty silver per fifty silver. It's expensive. Fifty silver. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm gonna spend one set one of fifty, 50 silver. One set of fifty silver. Okay. So you get to add uh, a plus one to this. Um. You are also researching in a, uh, uh, a well-stocked area with people who are knowledgeable on the, the topics. Do you um, want to take advantage of that um, yeah. while you're here? Okay. So he'll give you Prob advantage. Yeah. Okay, cool. So I'll roll again as well. Yeah. Wow, I rolled the same thing. Um, so that's 15. 15. With the plus one. Okay. All right. Um, go ahead and roll me a d10 and tell me high or low. I'm going to say high. Okay. So if you roll a 10, there'll be a complication. Five. Okay. Then you're good. No complication. <laughs> There's just a 10% chance of a complication. Oh. Okay. Um, <clears throat> okay. So um, with a 15... Um, I will uh, get to the results at the end of the week, but you'll um, be able to discover two things about uh, upgrading and modules. Okay, cool. All right, so we got Fearn has one research result, and you have two research results. 
Alrighty. It is the exact facility to be testing that kind of stuff. Um, and I'll say like on that third day when you're doing some of these tests, um, uh, Saskia would stroll up uh, soaking wet with a mocking spider in a bad in mood hands. with a spider. Yes, in a very <laughs> bad mood. Found this for you. Plunk. <gasps> it's one of oh. the things we fought. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> kind of. Uh, thank you. Sure. <laughs> if you yeah. could get any more of this, that would be greatly appreciated. More? Do it. There's a fuck ton of them down there. You want more? I'll go get you more. I'll be back. Uh, oh, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Hey. What? Here's some candy. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Okay, um, anything else, Bruce, for these three days? Um, no, I'll, I'll do I'll do little things afterwards. Cool, cool. All right. All right, so Septimus, we already kind of resolved uh, your rolled thing with the wards. Um, mm -hmm. So you're able to spend some time doing that and some shopping with that, and you can spend the time using your... Um, uh, whatever it's called, what is it called? The Blessings of the Forge, um, yeah. to create materials. I'll say you're able to make all the material over three days, if you do it every day, um, you're able to make the materials you need. Um, and you just know that you're gonna need to, at some point, either um, utilize the School of Artificing's facilities yes. or return to your Actually, do the house. Assembly. Yeah, you can't, um, yeah, you can't do it in the tavern. You gotta go either go to your home lab or the lab um, at the academy. I mean, it, yes. Um, I also want to talk to Sigil. Okay. Yeah. But I, I, I could be with Bruce at the end of this kind of like downtime period. Totally. Um, but it's really just to like talk about Mo. Mo. <laughs> I was surprised we didn't call him that more. Um, I say as if he's already dead. Um, <laughs> he's dead. He's already uh, dead. So yeah, I mean, uh, Bruce, would you, if Septimus asked, would you go with him for that? Oh, yeah. Okay. So perfect. So that'll kind of like, we'll we'll end downtime with this interaction and then it'll come back. We'll bring everyone back together. All right. So Septimus, you go pick up Bruce up from the workshop um, and the two of you head over to Sickle's library. Um. When you arrive there, as per usual, the big do giant double doors that are super tall open up to you. Um, since you have been approved to enter there, they just open automatically when you arrive. Um, and the uh, stacks and stacks and stacks of of towering bookshelves. Uh, you notice, like you're now that you've this is like your you know fourth or fifth time coming here. Um, you start to notice that like some of these stacks seem like they're in a different spot than the last time you were here and, and like like everything just looks slightly moved um and then you start to realize it always kind of looks like everything has been moved around there's always this central like thoroughfare to get to sigil's office but the stacks you start to look and you're like i don't this isn't that wasn't there uh and it's it's just a little huh moment hmm. huh <laughs> hmm. Um, which you know also reminds you of the weird endlessness of this of this library and how you you've never seen any kind of back of it or walls other than the entrance walls. Um, but you, <laughs> oh, hmm, huh. uh, but you can uh, arrive at Sigil's office and head in to say hello. He would just be working at his desk, uh, doing some scribing. Scribbin. Some scribbin. Just a little scribbin. Ah. Septimus. Bruce, welcome. I was not expecting to see you two before the end of the week. Uh, something's come up, Sigil. Uh, couldn't wait till then. I think, uh, I'm hoping that you can help us with and your vast knowledge. The other night, um, <laughs> we had an interaction with uh, the Mojon. 
that it was quite unsettling. As Satsum will go and describe the weirdness of it, the, the red glow, the ominous and menacing look that it gave, the no connection with Sal or with Bruce able to use any other machinery that surrounds it. Um, hmm. And it is a name that first reached out to me when we encountered it. Stony Heath. That goes by Lacuna. Interesting. Have you heard anything of this or know what this might be? Lacuna is a term often used in research for missing links, gaps in knowledge amongst academics in the Avdal Islands and other universities. You controlled the creature and shut down all of your mechanical parts. It did. Locked and it nine. seemed like it was looking for like it was in a like either a dormant state that was reawakening and reaching out looking for more. It said it was hungry and it needed more. And yeah. more and more and more. It, yes. It and you, that over and over again. And you had this voice in your head first. When we first found Monodrone in its capsule, I communed with what I thought was the spirit that resided within it. But the personality that Monodrone exhibited was different. And I put it at rest, but seeing it and feeling it and hearing it again, they were both the same. Well, the Modron and your uh, research assistant are looking into some of these things for you. I believe I've acquired some text for them to read. Perhaps I should look into some of it myself. Well, I would... Obviously, we're cautious about the Modron accompanying us going forward. And part of the reason we came is to know if you see if you would offer any wisdom, because it's looking like we might get rid of it, as it seems to be unpredictable. Well, and it's nature. Violent. A creature doesn't seem violent in its nature. There's a not, not the, the not monodron itself, but what it can be taken. Say. Whatever we took it can be channeled through it, and we consider that to be dangerous. Curious. An entity, otherworldly or not took control of a machina. Celestial machina. Lacuna. That is what it was called, right? It is... Help me re remember, because of a couple sessions ago, when I first encountered it and heard mm -hmm. it, it, did it say, I, I can't remember what exactly the phrase was was say i am lacuna or like call me lacuna uh it 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 did mention the name lacuna um and it said that he must arrive before the march was particularly what it said about lacuna okay at that time it didn't actually call itself lacuna okay that's what that's what i'm trying to remember It 
is the name that was told to me in our first encounter. And when I addressed it this last time, it seemed to respond. But I guess it never outright said that that's what its name was. And you see, as you as you finish that sentence, uh, Sigil gets up from his desk and starts to look through his personal collection of books in the office. Um, as he as he's doing that, he would say, "Otherworldly beings are always." dangerous or worldly beings are dangerous and from what you tell me it sounded like there was discovery happening think about it in the way that he spoke to you that evening it seemed unsure of what it was way you describe it saying I am we are lacuna the tone you described sounded unsure and you see he's pulling out books now and he finally finds one he's not pulling these out for you he just takes it and puts it on the desk um it's for himself to look into the t books, though, are completely nondescript. There's no titles on them. There's no title on the spine. They're just books that are bound uh, in, uh, in his shelf, as if he knows every single book that's on that shelf and where it is. This is very concerning. I can try to keep the creature on lock within the halls of the library, if that would make you more comfortable. I hesitate to agree that destroying it is the right move or next step we don't know if we don't really know much about modrons it's best to keep one around the study should we at least uh, contain it somewhere where it's not public just in case it does <laughs> i had assumed it was more, I should say, stable when you first dropped it off here, uh, given its weakness towards this lacuna, I can put in precautions to keep try to keep it where it is. It seems most agreeable, but if it has this penchant for chaos, despite its lawful nature. I can put in some precautions. I can't guarantee that he'll be completely locked down, but I'll do my best. Of course, if you wish to destroy it and it goes willingly, there's not much I can do to stop you. So this just takes a, like a deep sigh and he goes, Destroying it is not what I would prefer either. However, see, just the experience that we had is, is a bit frightening. Traumatizing. And yeah. this is why we came to you. Destroying it was our first thought because we don't know what we are dealing with. A common reaction to the unknown. Which is why we came to you. If you could find out more and see if you can contain it, I have some precautions of myself to keep us somewhat safe. Well, let us know in the next few days. But regardless, I don't. I don't know. I don't, I, I don't think the rest of the party would be comfortable if it accompanied us anymore. Well, for all intents and purposes, the creature is its own entity. I uh, will do my best to contain it, but I am 
no prison warden. I'd rather understand the creature before locking it in a cage. I'll do my best. Be careful. As well, if we went and destroyed everything that lashed out in confusion, well, we'd destroy the world. I will let you know if there's any updates. And I'll talk to the creature myself. I've been meaning to anyway. And his eyes kind of dart away to the middle distance. Is there anything? Wisdom signal. Of course. I'm. Please let us know if you learn anything urgent. As yes. you wish. I'm sure, we can. Thank help. you, Sigo. I'll see you at the end of the week. And he kind of just returns to his notes. Doesn't like say really goodbye or anything. He might even just be standing there awkwardly for a second while he's writing his notes. And he just the entire time kept his hand on that book. Can I? Um, there was no indication in the book of like or discerning features of the book. Not on the the cover and the spine. I don't know if I'd be able to sense any indentations. Yeah, I was thinking that while you were asking that, I was like, hmm, what, yeah. what could I, I'll say? Let's get a perception check. Plus two for a six. It's really foggy. Nope. It's it's the way he keeps moving his hand over it is causing vibrations that are disrupting your tremor sense. Damn it. <laughs> um, as if he knows and he was doing it on purpose to keep you from he seeing knows. it. <laughs> Sigil's the real enemy. Sigil knows all. Um, all right. <laughs> That will conclude our three-day downtime as you all can gather back together in the evening of the... fourteen. Cask and Crow, Harlequin and Chalice? No, I was, I was thinking of the... Cruise, cruise, what, what, what day is it? 14th, right? 14th, yeah, because it's yeah. three days. Yeah. That'd be the end of the... Yep. Three days. So the end of... Yes, so the, the evening of the 14th, you can reconvene for supper. That's the Cask and Crow. Cask and Crow. We really Lock should have gone Harlequin. with the Harlequin and Chalice. I just, uh, <laughs> I I thought for a second that uh, uh, like HQ could be like an abbreviation of Harlequin. <laughs> it's the H and C though. HQC. It's not actually the acronym, Why? but it's the Quinn. Quinn. Because the Quinn. <laughs> I walk in carrying two more of those uh, spidery things. Still dripping wet. Uh, what, oh. what the what the hells, Saskia? It's Kana. These, yeah, these are for Bruce. Can you leave him outside? You're dripping seawater all over my nice hardwood floors. Yes, yeah, sorry. Wait, are you gonna Bruce, pay for that? Have, you gonna pay for that? that? That chitin is actually quite useful. Oh I feel yeah, like it would have dried off between the time it came out of the water and when you brought it here. Like it's a solid. Like, uh, yeah, 10, can't you see it's walk? fucking seven parts? There's water stuck in it all over, and she's shaking right, them around, right, showing them to I'm, everyone. I'm gonna, I'm gonna shake them off outside. All right. <sighs> Sorry. God. As kind of yes, Septimus, I got, I gotta shake them, but I come back inside and I go to the table, <laughs> just plunk them on the table. <laughs> Here. There's still more if you want more. There's oh, thanks some Saskia. clothing racks outside. Yeah. I use them to dry my clothes. Maybe you could put them up on there. No, I don't really want those. Uh, I don't really want them out. I just figured, you have a bag of holding, right? Yeah. Yeah, I wanted them to go into the bag of holding. Yep. Sorry, uh, they still are a little bit wet. Septimus, I'll, I'll give you uh, one of these later. Saskia was getting these from the you probably recognize them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I said, there's still, uh, there's still more. If you if you need more, I can go back and get more. How many did you That's grab? Three. Uh, with those two, it would be three. Yeah. 
And you're, you, are they all in the bag of holding? Cause they're, they're quite large. Oh, they are? <laughs> yeah, they're not oh. like tiny. It's they're a bag they're of pretty holding. big. They're not, uh, they're not like the size. Of, they're probably like, like the size of like a dog, like a big dog. Oh my oh. God. My dog. Dog sized <laughs> spiders. Okay. <laughs> Just need to know what right, right They're down. robots. They're not creepy crawlies. They're metal crawlies. Um, <clears throat> well, I mean, how much do they weigh? Uh, yeah, because you can only, what is it, 500 pounds in 500 a bag right. of holding? Really? And it's 64 it? cubic feet inside mm -hmm. it, so. Fuck it, fine. I'll hold them. No, no, no. They would fit. They're, they're, they're each 100 they pounds. I, I, have, I have enough space. Okay. <laughs> uh, Kana comes by. Is there anyone you guys want to eat? You eating? No. Yes, please. Yeah. And I'm uh, I'm time. buying buying Saskia some food, too. Well, I can I can do it myself to make up for the No, no, no. You, you, just, you just got me some goods. Well, both Septimus and I some goods. Are you sure? <clears throat> All right, well, it's it's pasta night. Oh, fuck yeah. We got pasta with baked sausage. We got pasta with stewed lamb. We got pasta with stewed beef. And we got pasta with baked fish. Beans Which one is the most expensive? Uh, The beef. That one, please. <laughs> <laughs> Fion's got like a big box with his armor like sitting next to him. And he's like rifling through his money pouch with one finger, like just like peeking in and just like shuffling around, like trying to make money appear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Casting like a little spell in there. <laughs> it's not working. <laughs> All right, well, it's five copper for the beef. Four copper for throws the others. Five copper at her. Literally throws it. Okay. I, right. I take out five copper. And I have two copper left. <laughs> <laughs> I give it to her. Alrighty. Alright, two beefs. Ah. Uh, the, <clears throat> the seafood, uh. Pasta. Oh, okay. Two beefs, one one fish, and then fish for fish for Saskia too. She just went to the bed. Yeah, probably she's just probably right. that. Two beefs, two fish. I'll take a fish. Three fish. All right, coming right up. We also have a special uh, rabbit soup on the menu tonight, and a salad. Two copper each. Anyone want that? Ooh. I'll stick with the pasta. Okay. okay. Drinks. Well, bad. A little bit, Maybe. a little bit. Okay. okay. Wine. Wine? Well, of course. Wine, so I already... <laughs> Jackie. Jackie, I already got the wine coming for you. Don't, Don't worry. Don't that again. <laughs> I like thought the that's what you're time. going by. I heard you're walking around town today. Yeah, well, you know, you got to do what you got to do for show business, right? <laughs> but I'm Jacquette Touchard. That's my name. And then she kind of like straightens out for a second, and she's like remembering that you're one of her luxury guests. You just have been here so long that like, she, and the others are, are not <laughs> right. as luxurious as you. That, and she, when she gets mad at Saskia, she kind of loses her decorum. And then she kind of like shakes her hand and goes, of course, Mr. Touchard. Just nods uh, and returns to the group. Like being like, all right, help. You can go away. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay. Anyone orders beer, it's two copper. Uh, the wine is, uh, two copper for a glass, unless you want to get something more expensive. Uh, and, or, uh, two silver for the bottle. Beard doesn't bottle. drink, but he stares at, uh, everybody else's drinks, like, the whole <laughs> night. <laughs> yeah. All right, so uh, anything you all want to uh, discuss as far as your plans? I imagine you're going to the Commodore's office tomorrow. Oh, I meant to say this earlier. Jacquet would have sent a letter to the Commodore's office confirming mm -hmm. an appointment um, right. probably at like 11 a.m., mm -hmm. you know, right before lunch. And then we can do the power move. If it goes over an hour, we can keep her from her lunch, um, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> You get a uh, letter back that confirms the appointment time. Cool, cool, cool. 
Uh, otherwise, Jack Wett's got nothing. He's just, you know, like maybe, you know, if anyone like inquires or if there's like a silence, he just fills it with like talk about, you know, like, oh, yeah. And I was over, you know, I stopped by uh, what was that trash heap called uh, the Brave Bell? Uh, you know, it's a little better than the other business, but still not quite. I mean, not this, but, you know, so I got a gig there as well. If you guys want to come out, I'm sure the DM will give us some dates and times in the near future. The I just what? didn't want to push him. Uh, huh? Oh, sounds great. Can, well, you, can, you, can you tell us all the taverns that you visited? Oh, oh I missed <laughs> some of them. Um, but the, the ones that are important are the Royal Goat up in the Admiralty Court. I've got a gig there. Um... The Good Whisper Bordello, I don't have a gig yet, but I think the vetting process, once I really start making moves, you know, then they'll get me in there. And then there's the Humble Haven uh, over in uh, the Brigadier's District. Um, I think that one will actually be a lot of fun for you, Fjern. They just had a big brawl, uh, and things have quieted down, but, you know, maybe we put on a little feat of strength during my performance if you want, huh? Sideshow? Sure, I need the money. Well... Okay, you'll get a small percentage, but I mean, you know, we'll 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 talk about that later. All right. Uh, all right. Uh, 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 the beef is uh, good. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. uh, and one thing. Sorry, another mm -hmm. thing. During Jacquette's time uh, carousing about, uh, would he have run into his old buddy Reardon? Mm, mm. Specifically at the Otter business, where I think is where I told him to be spending time. Um, yeah, you you would uh, have been able to run into Reardon there. Um, okay. Or like at the very least, yeah, like you maybe check in each day, and, and you would be able to find him. Sure. Uh, and then, you know, for the sake of having everyone together, uh, Jaco would have been like, hey, at the 14th, come to dinner at the Cask and Crow. I'll pay for your food. Uh, <laughs> okay. <clears throat> all right. So, yeah. So then um, then I would say uh, while you were all like talking about Jacquette's carousing about the taverns and uh, the bordello and the hostels and whatnot, um, we would, uh, eventually you would see walking into the tavern would be your old friend Reardon, um, our lanky wild magic sorcerer, um, who, uh, is looking like much healthier <laughs> than when he was a bandit. Uh, like he's gotten a he's put on some weight, um, but he was very, very starved before. So he actually just looks healthy now. Um, still has like that really bristly five o'clock shadow that his face still looks rough despite his body looking healthier um still probably having sleepless nights um but he's sleeping in a more comfortable bed than he was before um as he would come over and just sort of look around um you know thinking like not used to being in a nicer tavern um um but comes over and, and looks at you, Jackie, and, and hey, sits down. There he is, Reardon. Please join us. Join us. Hey, hey, yeah. You here, this is this is yeah. Of right, course, we'll... and like Jacques would actually moves aside and but brings all the stuff with him. And he kind of awkwardly sits and he's like, he's never talked to the whole group. Uh, <laughs> he's w seen them since the, uh, uh, sure. but he's never like sat down with them. And he goes, "Hey, guys." Oh hey, we ought to... It's like it's like it's like that one guy. Like yeah, I know you, but like, so... <laughs> but who Reardon, also who remember. also tried to kill you? At yeah, that point. Exactly. <laughs> you remember Bruce and Septimus, Sasky and Fjern, right? Uh, yeah, I definitely remember Fjern and. Oh yeah, then he kind of looks at Sass for a second, like. Yeah, I remember you. Yeah, yeah, I remember you too, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, Kana, Kana, he says, uh, bringing her over and goes, uh, whatever, over. whatever he'd like, put it on my tab. Uh, and he, he, he kind of just looks, 
<laughs> looks at her and then like looks at you some of the plates that have already come out and goes, oh, I'll have that, I'll have that. And she's like, it's like, good choice, good choice. Um, <clears throat> he's he's going to have the beef, of course. And uh, the rabbit stew, get him that too. Oh. I'll have one too, please. Thank you. Put it on his tab. On her tab. No, no. No, on his. No. Yep. Nope. Only. Yep. No, on his. Him. Kana looks at you, Saskia, and she's like, that's too copper. Ma'am. And walks away. <laughs> As she walks away, a mage hand, a Jacquette's mage hand comes up for a high five. <laughs> she 100% goes for it. <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> uh so yeah so uh Reardon kind of is like sitting there and and like kind of looking around awkwardly as he's like uh so yeah boss uh you, I've been doing uh, I've been looking into that Mr. Greaves for you asking around it's uh slim pickings out there for 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 people in the widow's ward um but I uh I talked to a few people, but uh, most of the people I tried to ask, they, they, they got real uncomfortable. Like, like I did. Uh -huh. Sure. But the point wasn't for you to just talk to random people. I could do that, Reardon. The point was for you to get information. I Yes, yes. And I, I did get some information. Fantastic. Um, What I learned um there's a specific person who for the most part speaks for him okay he doesn't speak to anybody himself or at least i guess they don't really i guess he wouldn't know but if you've never met him he could be talking to him you don't even realize you're talking to him because he could just be standing sitting there it's fucking you isn't it no, no. Nah, I'm just kidding. She <laughs> looks away like, last time I saw that woman, she was murdering people. <laughs> 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 With ghost tentacles. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, it's a, a person um, Who, uh, the, la the only name I could get for them, uh, is a surname, uh, Orkwood. O-R-K-W-O-O-D. I was talking to some, someone in the Widow's Ward who, who does some, uh, moving goods for, uh, for Mr. Greaves' connections network. Um... And they said uh, they they only ever talked to a woman named Orkwood, uh, and that she can be found in the VIP section of the Widow's Ward on, uh, well, fight nights when they when they have them. I don't know if she's still the there. VIP section of the other business. Sorry, sorry. What did I say? The Widow's Ward. Yeah. No. Yep. <laughs> Some people would say that is the VIP section of the Widow's Ward. Ah ah ah. <laughs> But yeah, you know, this Orkwood, I guess, is the key. If you want to get to Greaves or you want to talk to Greaves, you got to talk to Orkwood first. So she might still be there on Wednesdays, if, even though they don't haven't done fight night in a while. Although I, heard... I knew something strange was going on up there. It always seemed suspicious to me. Actually, I was there the other night, and it was like a ghost town that was no one around. I could have just walked right up into the VIP section. Nobody would have batted an eye. Yeah, I mean, I guess if you really think about it, it's not really a VIP section without the people. Right. So if they're not there, it's just a room, I guess. Fair point. The, his beef, his, his stewed beef and pasta comes and he starts scoffing it down very, very impolitely. No table manners. Um, he's getting... Spaghetti sauce all over himself. Hmm. But yeah, um, Orkwood. I also heard that he's working with, uh, <clears throat> he's work. <clears throat> oh, sorry, I almost choked. Uh, anyone who's 
moving anything in and out of the port is, is in some way is a touch point with griefs. I mean, not him, but his liaisons. And, and from some of these people, it sounds like his his influence spreads pretty far. And I was talking to somebody who's not even from Hyven at the Widow's Ward who said that they were uh, waiting to meet with Orkwood. Uh, and that they're from uh, uh, the capital, Solonel. So whatever he's doing, it's, it's not just in Hyven. I mean, that guy had pretty loose lips. I wouldn't be surprised if we couldn't couldn't talk to him again. Understand me. Oh, you got a name? That guy? A name? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you mentioned him. He literally name's, said his that name's... he might be able to be questioned further. His name is dead. No. <laughs> ah, ah, ah. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, you, you probably want to talk to him find him as soon as possible as if he's they know how loose his lips are and he's probably either not here anymore or not here anymore uh but he said his name was jace he's a uh elven fella uh, from solon now had that look to him like the uh i've never i've only heard about them but i i presume he was one of those uh elves from halcyon they got the Pinkish skin with the black eyes, real creepy. But uh, he was—he was a nice guy. Hate to see him dead, but you know, that's how things go. How things go. Yeah. Any you... connection between Mister Greaves and uh, the? Did you hear anything about the uh, D D Leon brothers? The De Leon brothers? Yeah. I mean, I. I uh... I, I, I made my way down that alley where their shop is when I was trying to find information. Real unfriendly fellas. They did not want to talk to me. Oh, surprised you're still alive. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I've heard some rumors about them. And I wouldn't be surprised if they're connected. You said the docks are very connected with Mr. Greaves' business, right? That everybody in there has something to do with a hand in the pie, as they say. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, uh, nothing. It, it, it's implied that nothing coming in and out of Hyven is not known by Mister Greaves. I don't know if that's changed in the last month since the uh, arrival of the governor, and that his his you know his people are still here. So I don't know if Greaves. Reeves might have gone underground for, you know. Are there you, any... You know, the way the Widow's Ward looks these days, you'd think it's not a... It's just a poor town, not a hub of scum and villainy. During your time there in the docks looking around, were there any specific ships or captains that seemed to be making more money or seemed more important taking I, up more time i didn't really learn too much about that uh, i didn't really look at the sort of quality and movement of ships or really just i i asked some people that i've i met while i've been in town since you brought me here or sent me here um may have burned a bridge uh to get some information uh, but uh, mostly it was just about Reeves. I didn't learn too much about the inner workings of his webs. Mm. All right. Well, Reardon, I think if that's all you have to report, we appreciate your work. I enjoy your meal. Michael he, he kind of like is a little like <laughs> <laughs> when did you get here <laughs> i come here every thursday it's a great meal <laughs> uh, i think it's pretty uh... sure it's a tuesday <laughs> <laughs> oh shit 
I gotta pick up my kids. <laughs> it's like Michael, nine o'clock at night. Yeah. Michael Udon, Udon goes running out the door. And then he runs back in real quickly and grabs his bowl of noodles and then runs out the door. <laughs> um, but uh, Reardon awkwardly finishes his meal and like kind of like is sitting there. So you guys, you guys just want to want to hang out. Uh, I'm gonna go to bed soon. Oh, okay, okay. What do you do to hang out, Reardon? Uh, I like, I like, I like to drink, and I like, I like to to, to play cards sometimes. Oh, cards that reminds is. me. That wait, 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 wait. That reminds me. So quit. Uh, fuck. It might have passed already. But there was, uh, there was some uh, gambling that was going on in the hostel. I thought you might want to come and be a part of. Gambling at a hostel, you say? I. Oh, is it the 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 uh, the cheap tankard? I yeah, that's where. I stay. Oh, I, I, that's where I stay. Is that where you're staying? Yeah, that's where I'm staying. Why have I never seen you? Oh, uh, I don't know. Oh, uh, huh. small fucking world. Yeah. Everyone yeah. sleeps in the same yeah. room. How did you not see each other? <laughs> uh, must have been, must have been on the on the other end of the room. Yeah. Oh, maybe I was. I like to sleep on the top. Oh. Both. Both like him and <laughs> God were drunk and just didn't say. <laughs> Art did they say no to uh, quality gambling? Things have died down at the outer business. I was there the other night, and to Fearn's point, there's not much going on. So if you've got a, what do they call it when it's a group of people gambling together? A table. Group of people uh, gambling together. A party. <laughs> if you've got a gamble or a table, I'll swing by. It's called a I, tabletop role playing game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I don't. I, I. 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 I don't know if it's actually happening tonight. I. I might have missed it, but you can still. You can still stop by, or I can. You know what? Let me go find out for you, and and <clears throat> fuck, and then I will. Uh, I'll. I'll let you know. Yeah. Perfect. So you, so you don't have to. You don't have to take your fancy ass all the way down there. And then I already passed you. through. I already know it. Uh, what goes on there? A real side note. I, I googled group of gamblers because there's a specific specific word I'm looking for. The oh, first wow. thing that comes up is help is available. Speak with someone today. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Uh, it's like getting mail from like different uh, therapists. And... Yeah, you get a mail. A it's like, would you like to participate in a psychological experiment? <laughs> no, I don't need to. I just cheat at it. I always win. I mean, I don't cheat. What? Okay. So you uh, oh. can uh, potentially have a little gambling rendezvous with uh, Sass and Reardon at the cheap mm -hmm. tankard. Um. <laughs> Uh, all right. Uh, I think we'll take a quick break now. Hop back in to finish quick up the session. Break. Uh, oh my gosh! Who brought the dragon? That's uh, Jackpot Stream <laughs> tonight because he was murdered. But um, yeah, they actually aren't gambling, uh, Jacquet. They're actually playing Dungeons and Dragons in the uh, in the hostel. So Jacquet hates Deanna. it. He thinks it's the stupidest thing in the world and thinks everyone that plays it is a fucking nerd. Yeah. They're yeah. like playing what, you know, our lives are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They're like, like in they, the future. Yeah. Like, it's offices. Oh, man, bosses. I'm in ninth grade. <laughs> I'm sitting down behind this camera and I just burp right into the mic. Like, <laughs> it's like the 700th time, but it's still funny, man. And then I don't, I don't mute my mic when I'm eating. So I just, I just make a bunch of slurpy noises. And everyone yeah, hears when great. I type. It's great. It deals critical <laughs> damage to everyone. <laughs> All right. We'll be back in five minutes or so, folks. Five we'll see you soon. You don't know that. Uh, uh, see you soon. Welcome back, everybody. You got bored. <laughs> to a drift in Aldalore. Uh, we just finished up some downtime, uh, and our heroes reconnected with some contacts and. Uh, Found some nice shiny things in the harbor and uh, 
and found some cool taverns across town, uh, as well as a bevy of research. And look at that. Look at that. Jacquette, framed and front and center. And then they uh, met the up with... The picture that his mother has back home of him. Mm -hmm. Aww. I imagine it's actually though a little Jacquette in one of those um, old like Victorian gender neutral uh, dresses. One hundred percent, just looking miserable. Like, <laughs> mother, I don't want to do this anymore. That's what he sounded like as a child. Canonically, he sounded yes. like Eric Cartman. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> little Jacquette. <laughs> So good. Oh, that is very funny. Um, uh, they learned a little bit more about Mr. Greaves from their contact, Reardon, the reformed bandit, who is still doing crime, but uh, more of the uh, espionage-style crime on behalf of LaRue. Um, well, really, Jacquette. Uh, and now, uh, their evening is coming to a close, and they have a meeting with the Commodore at 11 a.m. the next morning. Is there anything else everyone would like to do before we uh, go to bed? Uh, in, in addition to warding for the night, uh, mm -hmm. Seth Miss will do some extra prayers on Sal to kind of like in hopes that he won't shut down. And like, mm -hmm. this is like bonding with him to his like, don't you leave. Don't you leave me. Uh, Bruce would probably also cast an alarm spell around the room for extra precaution. Very fair. Um, so you have your um, uh, warding um, solution, tincture, and you have an alarm spell. Um, except to me, it's like when you're having this moment with Sal and, and, and praying and anointing him, so to speak, um, like you do, like you have developed, perhaps it's part of the the gift of Lacuna uh, that you that you possess, that you, there's no affect on Sal's face, but you can feel something like you can feel a, a presence an emotional state um just a light vibration uh that you don't have any confirmation that this is exactly what he's feeling but you 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 um, have a sense that he's afraid he is oh, feeling no. the same fear that you two are feeling it's all right i feel that way as well we're going to figure this out. As um, I'm going to bed, I'm, I'm hankering, hunkering down in my uh, bottom bunk, mm -hmm. um, just saying into the darkness, does it start with an A? How about a B? A C? It's a C, isn't it? A C because of the C. And just... Hey, are we playing games? <laughs> no. No games. Yes. Lights out. Is it a D? E? No games. I'm not playing a fucking game. I'm asking very you important a, questions. You hear a bucket get thrown across the room and water spills on the ground. <laughs> and then just a, a chorus of shh. <laughs> Anything else? Uh, Fearn would leave his uh, armor in Septimus and actually he'd probably leave it in Jaquette's room. Mm -hmm. uh, just like drop it off there while he was out, you know, doing whatever. And then uh, I he would it. all. <laughs> I mean, <go> on. <laughs> if you do, I mean, <laughs> good luck. Uh, <laughs> I would probably head to the hostel and try and get a room there, if anything. Yeah. Um, so the hostel has space. Um, and it's one copper for a bed. Uh, and one, uh, one copper if you want a flagon to be able to dunk in the community barrel. I take the I use the one copper for the bed and I'll rest there, but I'll also not talk to anyone unless like alerted to 
Like, if Saskia sees me, I would just, like, not even say anything unless she came over and said hi. I'm going to bed. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. So am I. You, you guys, yeah, I'll say, like, you guys see each other, but, you know, it's it's not, this is not a, a great socializing space uh, unless it's, like, a night where people are all kind of socializing, don't have stuff to do the next day. The weekend, the hostel gets gets not doesn't turn to a party but everyone is is uh passing around flasks and 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 hooch and they're uh <laughs> playing playing uh gambling games sometimes uh you might on the right night find a little five finger fillet being played um <clears throat> okay so everyone you can catch your rest and meet the next morning to get ready to head over to the commodore's office together um <clears throat> it's oh, was that your hand raised, Jacquette? For No, that was a let's a go. <laughs> uh I have uh, before before we head over no. there. Mm. Okay. Just kidding. Oh, we can go. We can go. We can we can do What do you want? <laughs> hey uh Septimus, do you, do you not smoke a pipe? Uh, I do, don't particularly care for that. Yeah, I. So, but that's that. But that's the the magical one that. Right, but like I, I imagine I have to smoke it normally. Um, oh, oh, you're asking me if I just know if I know how to, not if I partake. Right. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. My father used to. Smoke a pipe. I at least know how to pack it for you. Oh, if you could do that for me, show me how to do that. All right. Is said, that what? Okay. <laughs> did you did uh, you come with any tobacco, or did you buy some? Uh, it it seems like it kind of just works on its own without any tobacco. Well, or then you don't need to ask me how to smoke it. I, I, uh, just put it in your mouth. Um, uh, I, I, I'm gonna try to cast sending okay. to uh, Bruce's grandmother, Grammy Bree. <gasps> okay, uh, Granny Bree. <laughs> 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 Sean's like, oh, <laughs> hey, <laughs> I I already have your 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 backstory. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, let me just quickly read her description. Grandma. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. Gra Grammy Bree. Grammy Bree. Um. So, uh, when you go to smoke it, it uh the the bowl of it does light up, um, as if it was burning a tobacco in there, and a smoke does come out of it. Um, a uh, and you would you would actually, you know, taste it. Uh, and 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 it does it it, it gives you a little buzz. Um, uh, <laughs> as you you're uh, um inhaling it um and you kind of intuitively uh understand once you've started using it how to cast the spell um and you basically have to take all of that the magical smoke in and then uh think your words that you need to say and then blow the smoke out all right <laughs> grabby it's me bruce how are you doing? I may ask for some money for the Academy in Hyven. I'll send you a letter. Love you. <laughs> um, you think all of that and then you exhale it out and um, Septimus, you're sitting there and this, um, this purple smoke comes out of his mouth. And as it comes out, you, you hear, uh, those words spoken in Bruce's voice with the smoke coming out. Um, as he's blowing, it's almost like he's blowing all those words out from his mouth um, as you hear them kind of like, depending on how fast or slow Bruce is blowing the, the, the smoke, you hear it either sped up really fast or really low and short or exactly right um, as it all just comes out and you hear him, <laughs> hear him send a letter 
potentially asking for money from his grandmother. <laughs> oh. See? There you go. <laughs> A moment Seems later, even maybe as like as Septimus starts to talk, you would simultaneously hear um uh, uh Grammy <laughs> Grammy uh Bree's voice come through uh, to you, Bruce. All right. Bruce. Ah, Bruce. It's been a, a long time. Oh, I baked you some oh, I baked some good treats the other day that I I, I really really wanted to give you but on for so long you've been gone for so long selena told me that she heard from you and i was going to say to selena you need to send brucey a, a, a whole package of cookies from me uh, uh so i don't know if you got those already uh i don't know if it, if you got it too quickly or too slowly if, if she can send it to you quickly uh oh she said you she only heard from you the other day brucey oh it's so sweet of you to go to 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 do whatever the hell you just did to me. Uh, uh, I mean, I know, uh, uh, money? You need silver? Oh, of course, of course. If you need silver, write to me. Write to me. I can talk to uh, Axel about the stipend, see if there's enough funds. Maybe we can get them from the company, uh, uh, from our, our, you know, oh, 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 I've put a little bit aside for my, 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 what they give me each month for, for just such an occasion, Bruce. And, uh, you really should call more often. You really should. You really should. I don't know if you are listening to me right now and you can respond to me and you're just not responding to me, but I think I'm just going to keep talking. Uh, and <laughs> she, she goes on for a while uh, before like, you can hear the spell just sort of fizzle out and she's still talking. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine Bruce is just like sitting there while Septimus is talking to him and just not answering. <laughs> he just like has his mouth open, like listening to his grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> As you know, yeah, exactly. And like, like the last things you hear from her, like, okay, Brucey, kisses, kisses, hugs, hugs. Hope to hear from you soon again. Oh, that reminds me though. That reminds me. Axel stopped by the other day and was talking a little bit about something about you asking for something from Dean's uh, office. Uh, but, and then she she just goes right back into another story, and that's when it fizzles out. <laughs> that's Grammy Bree. Wonderful. <laughs> Thank you for that. <clears throat> oh, not a problem. I can't wait to continue voicing all of these characters, especially some of these. Uh, <laughs> entire company. The entire company, yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, five sessions from now when you are investing in the Lighthouse District, um, we'll, have a, we'll have an all-hands meeting. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> So yes, so Septimus, you see Bruce kind of just staring blankly into the middle distance beyond you, uh, distracted by something. Um, but if uh, everyone is all set to meet in the tavern, we can move on to the next thing. Yeah. I will say I put my armor on before the meeting to look fancy. Sure. <clears throat> and it's nice. It looks nice. I mean, the armor doesn't have a lot of flair to it. You know, Audubon's shop is very much like utility um so it, it it it's sleek and uh efficient yeah i imagine it would look very impressive uh you know it shows that like a, a, a like i'm an official knight sort of thing because mm -hmm. it's like full plate yep. but the only thing that like brings it back down to earth is i kept the furs Mm. from my old uh you know viking days that still drape above uh, up top one of my shoulders which mm -hmm. now is like a little bit too much like i have these like large pauldrons on my shoulders and like yeah. attaching it to there makes it look like a little flashier than it was before but it makes you look um, even more like your mini yeah exactly <laughs> except this mini doesn't have a shirt on um, <laughs> well, I could just paint it silver and it could be your armor has abs <laughs> carved into it. <laughs> uh, sure. I like, I, I also imagine at a certain point, um, Fearn, you like have to ask like Saskia to help you don the armor 
in the parts well, where you like can't. Well, it would be Jaquette because <laughs> I put it in his room. <laughs> I imagine Jaquette's not going to help. No help is given. He so on, get your stupid the... invisible man to help me out. Uh, no, the fact that you call him stupid makes me not want to help you even more. Now, please vacate the premise. I can't leave unless it's the armor's on me. <laughs> Jacquette mage hands it. Starts moving <laughs> it out the door. <laughs> I'm and, holding it. <laughs> and uh, Saskia, when you get in, you would find a uh, half-dressed Fearn walking around the hallway holding chunks of his armor. Oh, what the fuck? Come here. <clears throat> Come All here. Right. Show me, show me where the pieces go. <laughs> that one goes like this. This one goes like that. All right. And you could Zaskia, do with this. You could do with that. You are officially Fearn's squire. Nah. Uh, <laughs> you get the uh, squire feature. All it lets you do is help people put on arm. Fabulous. <laughs> but you know who I'm not helping? You. I don't need it. Good thing he doesn't wear that kind of armor. Um, like, I'm self sufficient. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so you all, uh, gather together and head over to the Commodore's office. Uh, mm. you, uh, head up to the Admiralty Court. Um, you know where it is. You can walk right mm. in and you're in that lobby area again, um, with the, uh, large, uh, central, um, sort of like garden area with the circular chairs, um, benches. Uh, the massive chandelier up above the tall stairs that lead up to two halls in the back. The um, real grand uh, luxury hotel kind of vibe of the uh, the uh, entryway and lobby. Um, as you can uh, check in for what your was appointment. That the head guy's name? I have that somewhere. Something with a D. That's what I was looking for. When's the last, bit, last time we did that? Uh, a while back. Uh, last time you would have talked to him was uh, the last time you were in Hyven before Stony Heath. Uh, <clears throat> for the Doyle? festivals. It was Doyle. It was Doyle. Doyle! Do I, I just found it. I, was, I, I thought it was Doyle, but my brain was like, wait, was Doyle the com or the governor's guy? No, that was, was a meal. But that was a meal, exactly. Uh, <laughs> uh. Doyle is there in his uh pale uh his pale face, his all black attire, his slicked back hair, his his Dracula ass is there. Um <laughs> That's gonna say in my notes it says vampire question mark, question mark, question mark. <laughs> um <His> Dracula ass. <laughs> as you can uh check in with him and he would go and um uh you would only have to wait a little while before he would call your names, particularly would call Jacquette's name and then say Iron and Mana, uh, and say, uh, right this way, up up the uh, steps. Uh, she'll see you in her office, actually. And she leads you up the steps, off to the right. Um, up here, you can see there is um, uh, <clears throat> a mezzanine layer where there are kind of like these uh, openings that look down into the lobby. You can see there are several offices here um, where there are different people working. You actually would walk by one and you would actually see Emil is in there. Uh, as he did say the last time you saw him, he was staying in Hyven as a representative of the governor. Um, and eventually would lead he would lead you to another set of stairs that leads towards the very top floor, which is the actual office of the Commodore. Um, in here, it's, uh, it's very large. Um, it's, uh, spacious. There is a section that has a, a round table with several, uh, leather chairs, um, with a, uh, a bar, little bar, not too far from it. Um, and then in the other end of the room, you can see there is a large, very well-made wooden desk with several, uh, shelves behind it stacked with different books and scrolls and other things. Um, and you can see behind that desk, there is a double uh, double door, uh, window doors that opens out to the uh, rooftop because this is, uh, it's sort of the top floor is, um, I don't know what the word is for it, but it's, there's a, it's smaller on the, on the top floor than the rest of the building. So there's an actual roof you can walk around on, um, tiered. Um, 
and uh, she is sitting at her desk. Um, you can actually see some interesting things here for those of you who've never really been in a super fancy office. Uh, like Jacques, you would notice like she has some like decorations and accoutrement that are like similar to what you would have seen in your um, in your time in Domu Zerum. Um, like particularly if you ever were visiting the guild houses or the guild halls um, and you see these powerful people's spaces. You would actually see probably the most interesting thing uh, would be there is a um, there's a globe there um, with uh, uh, the known world uh, uh, cascaded across it um, with sort of this um, decorative fog that are sort of over areas that people have not fully explored. Um, <clears throat> And, uh, and yeah, so she's sitting there and she uh, sort of leans up from the papers and she rolls a scroll up, wraps it up and puts it uh, back in a shelf um, as she kind of wheels. She has a wheel, wheeled chair um, and she looks up. Thank you, Doyle. Welcome, uh, Iron and Mana. Uh, take a seat, please. I'll join you over there. Her. Amador, thank you so much for taking us as Jacquet. Uh goes to walk over to uh the the central thing and then spying the bar goes, May I? Um she she uh you say that like as she sits down in one of the leather chairs and leans back and she just kind of like looks up and goes, just gives you a nod and, and sort of points towards the, the bar area. Anyone yeah. else? No, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. Is there a chair next to the globe? Uh, yes. I want to sit in that one. Mm -hmm. And I kind of want to... I'm listening to the conversation, but I'm also just looking at the globe and maybe, like, when she's not looking, give it a little spinny spin. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, and, like, I, I think everyone is, like, getting comfortable as, as Jacquette, you go over there and... and can mix yourself a drink you find it's i mean this is like the, the nicest place in the city so you find she has an ice box there um oh. which uh has um you know elementally cooled ice ice uh chips in it uh so you can make a nice cool refreshing drink for you and bruce mm -hmm. uh, i think jacquette makes something with gin in it i had a feeling that's what was gonna happen <laughs> Like the like the genie, not the yes. The, uh, exactly yes, right. Of course, he of course. opens a bottle and goes, "I want the wish," and she goes, "No, no, don't open that." <laughs> <laughs> that was my last wish. <laughs> um, but she, uh, she, she kind of leans back as everyone's getting seated, and she like looks at you, Saskia, as you're kind of like maybe not spinning it, but like your finger is is over the the um the globe and she does kind of lean forward and, and just sort of for a moment is like uh, it's a fine piece oh <clears throat> yeah yes yes i mean it's yes it's beautiful sorry I, I was curious oh no by all means take a look i had it commissioned uh there's not that many of them in the Alpha islands these sailors prefer uh Nautical maps, flat on the table, easier for navigation. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. Um, and I'll look at it, and I'll look for Shallow's Gaunt, and just, yeah, just, just looking at it. I think, I think at one point you had mentioned, or, so, or like somebody said the name Gwenvillier, and I didn't feel anything when I heard that. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if I, I would I, I wouldn't like actively look for it, would I? Because it like doesn't really you might. mean anything. Um, I mean, you, you, um, you don't know where you're from. Yeah. Um, you get a sense that you might be from Gwenvillier because you woke okay. up on a ship in the middle of the Crencia Sea heading to Aldalor. Yeah. Um, okay. So then in that case, I'll look at it and like stare at it and <clears throat> kind of look in, think in my head towards the ocean. 
What's my fucking name? <laughs> <laughs> and as you're like staring really aggressively at Gwenvalier on this globe, um, like your fingers trace over it and you maybe like move the globe around. You could just see these names that mean absolutely nothing to you. You see mm -hmm. Tresix, uh, Oxlin, Elise, Alicia, uh, Ferothris, Visantium, and you're just like, nothing. Uh, she looks at you, Jacquette, when you finish making the drink and bring it over and then looks to everyone else. I suppose this is a long-awaited meeting between us all. Uh, I presumed one day as the official heroes of Hyven, I would uh, sit down with you. Perhaps I didn't expect so soon. But Jacquette, you implied some interest and information and shared solutions. I want to make it clear that we, Jacquette says, gesturing to the whole party, are here to help. We see the health, the vitality of this city parallel to the health and vitality of our, frankly put, uh, ability to get paid. You know, I don't think any of us really can thrive in a uh, dark, seedy underbelly of a place. So if we can help elevate Ivan and assist in defeating monsters and creatures that may overwhelm your house guard, you know, I think uh, that could be a beneficial relationship for us. Uh, and she looks to the rest of you. Uh, sort of like looking for a kind of confirmation that you all share this feeling. Well, I, uh, to be frank, that was the exact kind of connection I was hoping for with your group. As she um, sort of sits back and, and like, she's wearing like a very sharp suit um, uh, that is like this deep uh, uh, magenta color. Um, and she just sort of reaches into her pocket to pull out um, uh, a, a little bag. And she opens it up and she dumps it on the table. And out comes these, like, uh, for lack of a better way to put it, small badges um, that uh, just have um, uh, very simple uh, symbols on it that um, I'm trying to recall exactly what I said her sigil was. Um, Ooh, I might have that. Well, is it the have that too. her sigil have the or the governor's? The governor has his, which is the Harlequin pattern. Um, she had her own that I described a very long time ago, and it's somewhere in my notes that the banners and tabards in the Admiralty Court. Oh, yeah, the guards had it too. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I'll scroll um, up. But... Uh, I, but it basically is a, is a small metal badge uh, with that uh, formed into that her sigil. S sigil. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Ever, there's so, I to, just turned to Clayton. I searched my I searched my uh, notes for sigil or sigil, <laughs> and twenty eight things came up. Oh my god. No. Um. But um. But she takes them and she. Uh, pretty casually, like, just slides them across this this nice wooden table towards each of you. Um, and then kind of, like, sits back and kind of, like, does a little hand gesture in the air. And just sort of says, if you so wish, I can christen you with a certain authority. With these badges. To serve my office. Uh, now this authority is not over others within my city but an authority that might get you into certain doors. The main cost of this authority is completion of contracts with my office. Since the governor's arrival, I have begun a cleaning process of the city and Asia as a whole. And part of that is certain bounties that I believe your party would be adept at resolving. Highest of those bounties 
And she looks to you, Jacquet. A Mr. Greaves. But I imagine that would be a longer process to uncover that cockroach. Well, it seems that when you're in town, he goes in hiding, so. Yes. So I may need to leave for that process to begin, or at least make the appearance that I'm no longer here. I wish to stay in the city so long as we are engaging in this cleanup. The governor expects me to stay in the city until the rails are completed, and then take the... He will arrive on the train, and then I will take the train back to Asia City. That will... How long until the train, the rail, is supposed to connect? Quite some time. The last timetable showed four to six months, but I suppose that'll depend on the quality of our, our home, Asia. The more we can clean up those who might be opposed to the governor's influence or those who might be disruptive of a supply line. Perhaps that might be closer to four months versus six months. There are other bounties, of course, though, that can be engaged in. Lower level criminals, uh, as well as those who cause disruption within Asia and Hyven. Some of the pirate crews that have been wanton in their raiding. Like who? For example. Uh, well, the top of the list right now is a, a ship called the Bone Rattler. Ah. Last we heard, it was captained by a woman named Alina. Their previous captain, hmm. well, is no longer around. <laughs> Some rumors have been spreading about that. Oh? And what do these rumors say? Rumors say that the man who killed their captain may have been hired by somebody from out of town. But there are tight lips in the Widow's Ward these days. I couldn't get much more information. Or my people couldn't. But the Bone Rattler is an example of a wanton crew that does not have a writ for behavior and is violating the governor's treaty with Halcyon. They are suspected to be involved in the destruction of the Storm Spire and the halt in aeronautic trade. So. I start biting my nails and I go very green. <laughs> The governor has his own machinations. I fear these pirates will be empowered by the governor at some point if I don't either take care of them now myself or bring them into my own fold. The governor is a tricky man. But completion of these contracts will maintain your status as agents of my office and will come with rewards of their own. Fantastic. We love rewards, don't we, gang? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> wow, that was not as enthusiastic as I thought. <laughs> What do you want to do? Cheer like school children? No, I you just... do a job. Okay, fucking... A little bit of conflict amongst iron and mana? 
conflict's a strong word. More like uh, never-ending tension. Uh, it, it's adventure. more like Jackie's way too expressive for... Jacquette. Jacquette is... <laughs> we hear Shut the talk fuck all the up, time. Septimus. I don't want to hear your goddamn cackling. Oh. Perhaps we shouldn't drink at the next meeting. <laughs> Shakrit's like almost done with his drink <clears throat> puts it down and pushes it away well if you've got some contracts I think we would all love to see uh, what you have to offer I don't know about my friends but I've been itching to get a little you know well, I guess last time I didn't really take as much of a hit as the rest of you well I can have Doyle draft up some bounty contracts with you for some more approachable uh, individuals and we will continue working on the long-term goal of Greaves. We have some information. Uh, I'm not sure if... Jacquet shoots a glare. Uh in as stealthy as he can while still making sure Fearn is aware at this, just like information regarding Greaves or his web of criminals more just information about general crime in Hyven not too much to do with the organized kind I don't think well, you can, give, you can give that information to Doyle and he'll write, write up a report for me. Uh, I suppose I would like to make myself clear with this cooperation. You have made a home of Hyven for your work. And I will admit you've done a lot of good for Asia. Opening up the crossroads for trade was very helpful, not only in, for my arrival in town, but the governor's. It would have been unfortunate for his caravans to go through a town held by bandits. And from what I understand, you've done good work in Stony Heath as well. I appreciate this. And I appreciate your desire to make Hyven a more hospitable place. But Ezra... Ezra is important to me. And as much as you are helpful is how much I will be helpful to you. But if you show any signs of abusing this authority, or spoiling the future of Hyven. I will not hesitate to find you. And I'd rather we not meet in that way. Well, I think the feeling is mutual. So, I don't have this ability yeah, but eventually there's an ability where I can size up an opponent and mm -hmm. be like, you know, it's mechanically, it's like, what level are they? Are they higher, yeah, the same, yeah. or lower level? Uh, so this is more of an insight check just to, can she back up this threat? Yeah. Like, as yeah. an, you know, individual, you know, like, when I look at her, do I see like, oh, wait a minute, like, there is like a, you know, a strength or mm -hmm. a dexterity and intelligence <laughs> yeah uh that you know to back up yeah go for it 15 15 uh not so bad um so you it's hard to discern if she has like i guess like basics like she doesn't look like a particularly like strong woman like she's she, she doesn't seem like right. the type who's coming at you with a great sword um she's more cunning um, and whether that means that she has some hidden abilities that are related to magic, uh, or if she is someone who knows how to make her words go far, 
uh, in the sense of she might not be the actual one coming for you. Right. Her her patron is. Yeah, a, a sea witch. Um, <laughs> um, she, from the stories, though, you've heard about her. She, right. she probably has some martial knowledge, given that she originally wanted to be a black, or uh, not blacksmith, a paladin, a paladin. From what you you understood, right? If those stories are true, mm -hmm. you do notice with a fifteen insight, like maybe you look at her, you're sizing her up, and then you look around, and there are there are weapons on the walls. And not just like decorative weapons. They, um, they look like they are like some of them, like a couple of them, you look and like, that's clearly decorative. It's got jewels sure. all over it, but other ones just are weapons, okay. um, that, uh, um, may have sentimental value, but certainly right. look usable and sharp. Okay. That's the thing you notice most is that some of them are clearly sharp. Right. <clears throat> but. Other than that, you can't discern if she's, you know, any kind of class that she might be. Right. Uh, <clears throat> so after she says that, Jacques kind of like, you know, he was like leaning back, legs up, and then, you know, he puts him down and holds up his hand. He's like, please, please, Commodore. Umidori, we would never think to harm your great city or is it a, it's not a country. What, what would you call it? Kingdom? That doesn't seem quite right. Eja, we would never do anything to harm <laughs> your dear Eja, as it were. And I don't I think mean, you would at this point, but <sighs> being the Commodore of Eja and Hyven, I've seen my fair share of cutthroats. And while we might be at this point the most peaceful province of the area of the sodality like the other provinces our history is still piracy and raid and i still remember how to be deadly hopefully it's something you not forget anytime soon <laughs> there are many pirates still in hyven not just the ones that are dangerous to you the Maybe people of the widow's some. ward they're uh they have a certain distaste for this side of town something we might want to work to you know clear up in, for in order to avoid future conflict is that something you're amenable to? Certainly. My goals are for the freedom of my people. Freedom from tyranny. But also freedom to live happy lives day to day and not be threatened. Some of these pirates I know and when they go through the proper channels, they have nothing to worry about. Mm. This is still Alfdal. Wouldn't that make them privateers? Sorry, semantics. You're correct. That is what I was insinuating, yes. I have a very specific question. Yes? Uh... <clears throat> If, uh, in our, um, investigations, um, mm -hmm. we happen to, um, maybe find out information about... Speak up. Find out information about, um, uh... It, Something about the that that spire that you mentioned. What might be the um, course of action that would be taken against those who did something? 
Uh, traditionally, traitors and pirates were hanged. Uh, Although I surmise that Governor would want to turn those individuals over to Halcyon as a sign of good faith in his treaty. And from what I hear, and she kind of looks to Bruce, the eminent houses, depending on which one it is, might have them are far more brutal and unpleasant punishment than death. From what I understand, that is a true statement. Right. Okay. Right. Well. If this partnership is to continue, then perhaps there's other things you can we can work together on. I've got something. Maybe a business opportunity. I more so meant uh, projects led by my office, Damn. but uh, maybe we'll get there. Ian, right? Yes. Okay. White eye. White eye. I have a warning for you, though, if you are to continue your pursuits of Greaves. More warnings. Okay, lay it on me, lady. I've heard them all. Really? Oh, yes. What have you heard? What haven't I heard? He controls everything. Everyone knows of Greaves. Everyone respects him. It's not always respect out of, you know, a general like, oh, he's a good guy. I respect what he does. It's, no, you respect him because you know that if you wrong him or if you do something, he knows about it. And he comes after you. I've heard it all. I've heard how any, nothing happens in your, and Jacquette pointedly says that towards her, your city that doesn't go unnoticed by Mr. Greaves. Well, the hope is for you to change that. And Damn also, straight. his vision is far, but incomplete. Now, the warning I was to give you, everyone respects him, either through fear or admiration, but you can hardly find a single person who has met him, seen him, a man could be anybody. Careful who you talk to. I gave you this warning at the gala, but I have on good knowledge anyone you speak to in this city, myself included, unless in particular circumstances could be Mr. Greaves. And at this, Jacquette brings his glass back and kind of like leans into it in the table and like looks her directly in the face. And he finishes his drink, puts it back down and goes, how do you draw a moth out? You light a bright flame. And then he kind of shoves it and he goes, the target's on my back. You have nothing to worry about, Commodore. Well, I guess no holes in your on. sweater. <laughs> exactly. Fjern gets it. I know what I'm doing. The best way to get information is to act like you need it. Cocky as usual, but I suppose you need that with the work you're doing. And he, she kind of looks to the rest of you um, and just nods again and says, anybody and then stands up and takes out a cigarette from her gold cigarette uh, case yes perception check I want to know what kind of <laughs> I knew that was coming 
Uh, give me a perception check. What are cigarettes? 17. <laughs> what is <laughs> They're little cigars. <laughs> uh, 17? Yes. Uh, you see that the brand of cigarettes that she smokes are Phoenix Spirits. Oh, hell yeah. That's a good, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. More for real. Particularly, she smokes the long ones. Mm-hmm. She seems like the type to let, you know, smoke along. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but yes, you can all take, you know, she's her, she leaves the badges for you to take. Um, and uh, thank you, uh, uh, Clay, for putting in, in our chat the, the symbol. But you can see they are, it's the uh, form of a silver dove and a gold raven, um, except that it's all platinum. It's not uh, differentiated by that color. Coloration, um, and it's sort of like this uh, fusion of the two of them, sort of in flight, uh, forming kind of a um, uh, outstretched wings. So it has kind of a <laughs> a Batman symbol shape, but it's a dove and a, and a raven. And these will give you essentially authority of the Commodore. You can use these to invoke that authority to gain entrance into certain places uh, and to legally, if you have a contract, arrest people. Okay. If you have a contract for that person, you legally can uh, arrest them to bring them to the Commodore's justice. Um, but any law-abiding citizen will essentially, um, unless really, really resolved and really, really uh, stern in their constitution will like let you into their business, let you look at a few things, look in their you know in their back areas, inspect their ships, um, you know as long as you have a contract that you're working on. Um, but she uh, she says she sort of just steps back to her desk where she has this. Um, can, can we yeah. uh, can we take people's horses if we give them back? <laughs> you could try yeah I, I like the thing is this is the thing Ivan is a semi-lawless city if you just show us a badge and a contract and say we're taking your horses and we're gonna give them back an everyday person is probably gonna be like uh, okay uh um and like probably like fold to any kind of like uh authority uh you go to the widow's ward and try to take something from someone there, they might have a little different perspective on it. Um, but uh, but you are agents of the of the Commodore now, um, and and are allowed. You've unlocked the bounty board. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and uh, but yeah, she she sort of just gives you all a nod and and a little bit of a wave to to leave. Um, as she pulls out a, uh, what looks like a very, um, ornate, uh, lighter, uh, from a drawer that anyone with a passive perception of 15 or higher can see has many ornate lighters in it, as if she might be a collector. Uh, cool. all right. But she, uh, she goes back to her business. She, op she, uh, and... You all can take your exit. As we uh, I look at Jaquette and I say, if you don't want me to tell her anything, you should have said so before the meeting. I just thought it'd be common knowledge that you'd play your cards close to your chest. I mean, you know, the Commodore is the one in charge, but we still don't know anything about her or the governor or really what's going on here. They're in power, but that does not make them the good guys. But they've trusted us enough to give us power and show them the badge. Yeah, power within their system that may be totally broken and fixed against the good people. Like us. Guys, I I, I, I I'm I'm I don't I'm really nervous. Uh yeah, I could tell. Yeah. I think she could tell too. Fuck, if someone comes yeah. looking for you. Remember, I was on the airship, and you're the idiots that blew it up. Shh. Shh. Yeah, 
that's what I want to fucking talk about. Like, if there's a fucking bounty out for the people that did it, we're right fucking here. We did it. We were the ones okay, that did it. Okay, sorry. I, I was being a little... Look, Saskia? What the fuck are we supposed to do? You were nobody then. You were patsies being used by the Bone Rattler, by Hastings. Remember? They we didn't care. On, we we're still on the crew that did it. Yeah, but I've they don't care. I've been with them before. I know them. Sure. And as far as anyone knew, you were dead after that. You were not expected to survive. They did not come back for you. Yeah. You are not who's going to be on a wanted poster. It's going right. to be the crew of the Bone Rattler. And as we've seen, we can deal with those schmucks. So I don't want to be it. too nervous. You could just deny it. Yeah, because right. I'm such a good how are they gonna liar. prove how are they gonna prove it? You like the lie. To... Captain yep. of the ghost whatever. Poisoned ghost, fuck off. <laughs> and you know I am I I'm I'm a bad liar. I'm a freak. Well that's bad why liar. we keep I don't know. You lied pretty around. well. I don't even have to lie. I was I wasn't not... pointing to you, Fian. I was obviously pointing to Jaquette. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, I under I appreciate your concerns, Saskia. And Fearn, I understand where you're coming from, wanting to share information. But I don't know if we can trust the Commodore as far as we can throw her. Again, not really talking about you, Fearn. Because you could probably actually throw her pretty far. You're, and uh, and Jacquet again just kind of grips. Uh, they're under the armor now, so he can't grip his muscles. <laughs> as he just like kind of like <laughs> grabs onto his armor and shakes it a little. Uh, but let's go tell Doyle where to find us when he's got some contracts ready, and I don't know, do some more downtime activities. Da da da. Complete some research. <laughs> um. Uh, okay, so you go down and Doyle is waiting for you, um, and he uh, he looks to you and says, uh, "Iron and Mana, always charmed. I'll have some contracts ready for you. Uh, you can check each week, and there should be new contracts every week. Uh, right now, there's only one that I have ready for you." From my understanding, low-level fixer, connector. Rats in a basement? No. No. Well, rats on a wharf, really. This is someone who we don't have full... You need to do a little investigating for us. But a certain harbor master has been suspected of connections to Mr. Greaves' network and other illegal shipping in and out of the harbor, both in important goods, but also, from my understanding, in the Commodores, dangerous goods. A Winifred Teague. Hell yeah. Now, the bounty is for evidence of these illegal shippings. Once proven, and you have taken the evidence, you can return with that for a bounty of 1,000 silver, or upon acquiring the evidence, you can acquire it and Winifred Teague with your new authority. If you bring her in, as well as the bounty, we can give you 2,000 silver. I have the contract here. If you wish to take it, your representative, and he kind of, with a slightly mocking smirk, looks at Jacquette, or whoever is a, we can view as your leader, can sign here. I won't engage in this. And Jack would just takes out a quill, looks to the rest, kind of like, like, are are we good with taking this bounty? 
Give or, it a nod. I don't. Yeah. I look like I'm gonna vomit, but well, I'm gonna be should, outvoted. Should we? Should we see what else he's got, or is this the only he one? He literally said this is the only one. Right yeah. yeah. All right. But I mean, we can ask him again. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> Do you? I, I have white, a lot of. I have a lot sure. of. He repeats. I. Re, I just repeats everything I just said, <laughs> <laughs> and you can't skip it. <laughs> uh, Jacquet signs iron and mana, uh, or Jacquet to shard uh, in on behalf of business iron. as iron. <laughs> yeah. He then hands you uh, your W twos um, and. <laughs> Well, actually, you're freelancers, so we would need what do you call them? 1099s. 1099s, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> Woof. I yeah yeah. Uh, so okay, so the he uh, takes it then, um, and uh, you can see he has um, basically a copy of it to hand to you to use as your authoritative um, documents um, for your investigations. Uh, and he smiles and says, "You can check back." Next Monday, I should have updated contracts available. Yeah, see you next Tuesday. <laughs> Goodbye. Jacquet doesn't even look at him anymore. Once he's got the contract in hand, he just turns and marches out. So you've taken your first okay. Commodore contract. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I still feel like we should have told them a lot, uh, not even about uh, just like crimes and things that have happened to us. Like, should we tell them about like the dragon turtle that we saw and Why? the battle with the pirates? Why? What does that get us, Fian? I mean, it probably keeps the sea a little safer. She knows what's coming. What's the right thing to do here? The contract? Uh, no, no, no. But... Oh, Saskia, Saskia. The right thing. There is no right thing. We're working within. That's not kind of that. I can't. I can't. I can't think. A city that. of no, gray it has matter. To be the right thing to do. No, nope. I need a right, and I need a wrong. I, I Why don't you ask the voice in your head or that little barnacle that's crawling she's around? She's being a bitch. All right. I I tried to ask her a question, and she's she's not answering me. We're so, in a fight, actually. We're fighting okay. right now. Okay. You're asking what the right thing to do is? Game? But, Chuck, but, but uh, do but the contract. We, we had a, no, 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 no. But we, we have a relationship with Winifred. We can we? we she gave uh, us information, and we said we would, we, we would, sure. we wouldn't bring thing, we wouldn't, we wouldn't bring things to her. What? That's Why not true. We, now I, we bought information from her. Bought keyword. Uh, and then she told but, us she never wanted to see us in her office again. But now we're going to um, have to go into her office to get that. And she's going to oh see no. us. Oh, no. Oh, no. Except for now we're working under the authority of the Commodore, who usurps Winifred. And really, Winifred didn't do us any favors. She's going to she be took so a mad. Lot of gold. She's very powerful. She is not that powerful. She is. She is. She's got connections. Her book is her power. And if we get that... That's all the evidence we fucking needed. Though, I will yeah. say, we might need something to help connect because she does not use normal bookkeeping from what I saw. It's written in some kind of shorthand. Um, but, you know, we already have a leg up on this. And honestly, 2,000 silver between the five of us isn't that much, so it's probably not going to be that difficult if I met a gaming here. <laughs> <laughs> What what about other things? Like, uh, do we want to tell her about Cadmus acting all weird? Why? And... What? Okay. <laughs> Fjern? <laughs> Two things. One. Just throwing information at people is not helpful. And two... And if How God, is that not helpful? Because we don't have anything substantive to go on. We know that Cadmus is dealing in things with Halcyon, right? We know that House, you know, that he's working with the Academy. Umadori funds the Academy. Basically, she pays for Cadmus to do what he does. We got paid through the Academy, ergo, she paid for our last job. You see what I'm getting at here? Yeah. So, without 
actual evidence to say Cadmus is doing something bad, which he's not. Cadmus is doing his job, as far as I could tell. We just don't like what his job is, right? Right. He's just a douche. But like, you know, right? You can't just report because someone's a douche, a douche doesn't mean that you can arrest them. Trust me, otherwise right. I would have been in jail a long time. Yeah, I beat you to it because I saw where you're going with that. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's great uh <laughs> thank you voice but sky. uh yeah you just hear in the calls ha, ha, that was good um <laughs> good joke <laughs> oh god <clears throat> anyway <laughs> um so yes so as you leave the uh commodore's office and are discussing you know what you should be doing what's the right thing for some of you some some of you wanted to be more open with the the uh these people um you can head back out into the streets um you know as you're walking you know the more nervous of you you know maybe uh saskia maybe a little bit of fear and i mean really any of you but uh there's just a lot of people in the streets and every time you catch someone's eyes that lingers for too long maybe that warning comes back into your head that anyone in the city could be Mr. Griefs at any point. I glued. I'm telling you. <laughs> the best twist. <laughs> and you think, maybe, of all the people you've met in this city, all the people who have been interested in you, all the people who's has your name on the back of their mind, or even at the front of their mind, the newspaper, the taverns, the temple court, the flea market, even out in the villages that you visited. Any of them could be Mr. Greaves. That may be the street urchins he met. Omar seems like a good kid. I don't think he's yeah. capable of this. Yeah, I don't know if he's got the critical thinking skills yeah the chutzpahs. <laughs> no he's just the king of the the lighthouse ruins <laughs> with all the other poor kids um but um i do think that that's where we're going to call it tonight um and when we uh, next week we can conclude your downtime and conclude the research that you have brewing uh and you can uh do what you want to do next um <clears throat> all right thanks folks for hanging out with us um we will see you all uh, next time. For this episode has been brought to you by TurboTax. Make sure to do your taxes coming up in the next couple of months. <laughs> no, it hasn't. Uh, no, it hasn't. <laughs> we are not affiliated with TurboTax. Nope. <laughs> not sponsored. Anyway. <laughs> we are not affiliated with any of the tax companies that are. Oh. Anyway, <laughs> we're going to. Uh, we'll send a raid on over to uh, Total Party Chill. Uh, we're playing some D and D as well. So thanks for hanging out with us, everybody. We'll see you all soon. On the flippity flip. On the flippity Bye. flip, exactly. That's our official message. Good night. <laughs>